WhatsApp message me when you want when you're happy for me to go. I've uh, we, we're live. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jean. Uh, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Area Planning Committee for Greenwich on the th Tuesday, 13th of April. This meeting is being held under emergency regulations and some of the council's procedures have been amended accordingly. During the meeting, all participants will be in control of their own microphones. The microphone should be set to mute at all times and I will ask you to address the committee. Uh, any member of the committee who wishes to ask questions of an officer or to sp a speaker or to speak during the discussion part of the meeting should click the raised blue hand icon in Zoom. Please be patient. I will, as you know, eventually see you or you can wave at me. I will be aware that you wish to speak and will come to you in due course. Any member who loses visual or audio connectivity must notify me and the clerk before any voting takes place and the loss of connectivity will be recorded within the minutes of the meeting. If it is sufficiently large for you to admit to having missed a chunk of the meeting, then you will not be allowed to vote. Voting on any agenda item will take place by each member of the committee being asked on how they wish to vote. Uh, the items will be considered uh, as listed on the agenda, but we have got to change to that. But for each of those agenda items, it will be an officer introduction, objectors, and then the applicant and their supporters or agent. Only members of the public who have registered to speak two working days before the meeting will have been provided with the link to participate. Members of the committee will then have the opportunity to ask questions of the speaker, after which, and this is quite important, after which the speaker's participation in the meeting will end. When you've had your two minutes and any questions from members, that's the end of it. Uh, after submissions from the public and the applicant, the committee will discuss the application and come to a decision. Speakers should not repeat comments already made. I can kind of stress that, particularly as we've got a long list of speakers tonight. I, I don't think the, the committee, or myself in particular, want to hear the same thing said 12 times or 11 times, I believe, there are 11 speakers. I'm not being rude, I'm just being um, pragmatic. Uh, so please try to make different points. And if you do think your points are the same as the previous speaker, could you please say, um, I no longer wish to speak. I will call the speakers in the following order. And please note, I retain the right to reduce the amount of time given to speakers, although I don't normally. Um, so the organ order is representatives of organised groups and amenity societies, individuals, elected representatives, including councillors not on, but councillors not on the committee. Um, and so we have two items on the agenda tonight: land to the rear of 76 Farnborough Park, Blackheath, SE 37 JQ, and item 580 Westcombe Park Road, Blackheath, London, SE 37 QS. Um, I am intending to take chair's action and take. Item number five as the first item on the agenda, once we've actually just gone through the agenda formally in a moment, uh, because it is a, uh, a presentation of a relatively small uh, application, and this is being done uh, for probity's sake as well. It normally, I would have thought, uh, been a deferred decision by officers, but it is a senior member of uh, Royal Borough Greenwich staff, and that is the probity that we follow uh, on, on the RBG. Right, so item number five will be the first item on the agenda. Right, Jean, back to you. Apologies for absence, please. There are no apologies for absence. Oh, sorry, Jean, I thought I meant Claire. So, terrible. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> uh, urgent business. Does anyone have any urgent business at all? I'm not seeing any hands going up. Okay, in that case, declarations of interest. Members are required to declare any personal or financial interest that they may have on the two items for consideration this evening. Do I see any declarations of interest? I'm not seeing anyone waving or any forest of blue hands going up on my screen. Therefore, I think, Dean, uh, Claire, we can now move on to item five on the agenda, which is 80 Westcombe Park, Blackheath Road, SE 37 QS, reference 21 stroke 0626 stroke HD. Um, could we have Casey, please, the, uh, to share the screen so that we can have the presentation? Thank you very much. And thank you, Chair. Right, can you see that okay? Yes, yes thank you. Perfect. So this is item five. <laughs> item one for 80 Westcombe Park in Blackheath and the Greenwich Area Planning Committee is requested to grant planning permission for the construction of a single storey rear extension. Um, there was one objection received for this application which has been summarised in the committee report. 
Um, so this is the site location plan and the site is outlined in red. And the site is located on the southern side of Westcombe Park and comprises a two-storey mid-terrace dwelling house with pitched roofs, two-storey bay windows and a front canopy. Uh, the site is located within the Westcombe Park conservation area and does not contain any statutory or locally listed buildings within. The site is also not subject to any Article 4 directions. Uh, Blackheath High School is located at the rear of the property and there are a number of locally listed buildings located 150 metres east of that application site, which I have shown as stars on the map. And the application site is, located, is um, highlighted in red there. Um, so here is the front of the application site um, shown underneath the green arrow, um, showing its context. And here is the rear, again under the green arrow. Um, a rear dormer has been established on the site, which was granted in 2006. And the neighbouring property at number 82 Westcombe Park was recently granted planning permission for a three metre rear extension in October 2020 and is currently being constructed as part of this image. Um, the, yeah, it, from the surrounding site, surrounding area, you can see that three meter rear extensions have been established in the surrounding area. Um, so the proposal, well, here are the floor plans and the proposal is for a 2.2 meter deep rear extension, which will have a full width of 6.4 meters and would have a mono pitch roof with three roof lights. Um, the proposed rear extension would have a maximum height of 3.9 meters and a need height of three meters. And the proposed materials would be interlocking tiles for the roof, which would match the existing and slim line sliding doors and windows, as well as silicone render for the walls. Um, based on the height scale and bulk of the proposed single story rear extension, it is considered that there will be no impact to the character and appearance of the host property and the street scene and the proposal would, would pre preserve the character and appearance of the Westcombe Park conservation area. The proposed roof type and materials of the proposed extension would match the host dwelling house, which is considered acceptable. And the proposed sliding door and window would be located to the rear, which can't be seen from public vantage points. So overall, the proposed rear extension would not detract from the character and appearance of the host property or the Westcombe Park conservation area. Um, in terms of residential immunity, given the limited height and depth of the proposed uh, rear extension, it's not considered there'll be an unacceptable loss of residential immunity in terms of increased sense of enclosure or a significant loss of daylight and sunlight to the adjoining properties. And there are also no side windows proposed, so there will be no loss of sunlight, no loss of privacy to these, uh, to the joining neighbours at 78 and 82 Westcombe Park. Um, therefore, the Greenwich Area Planning Committee is recommended to grant planning permission for subject to conditions for the construction of a single story rear extension. Oh, I think you're on mute. I can't, I couldn't quite hear you. There's on and off. My iPad has very, very, very sensitive buttons. Apologies. So uh, if you could stop, stop sharing screen and then we'll um, have our uh, brief, uh, we'll have our debate on this. Um, right, over to members, please. Um, questions for the officer. And I'll just get my screen up to make sure I can see your hands going up. Any questions to officer? Um, I don't see any. No, don't see any. OK, um, in that case, I'm going to now ask um, the. Um, excuse me, I'm just whizzing around another screen here. I'm going to ask the uh, the applicant's agent, Mr. Peter Ellis Elsigood, sorry, El Peter Elsigood, to speak uh, on behalf of the applicant, Ms. Pippa Hack. Thank you. Hi, Stephen. OK, um, what would you like to know? Uh, well, basically, um, are there any particular issues that you've identified whilst in, in the, when you've been drawing up plans and for the build works or any, any questions that my, uh, our, my colleagues on the committee might what, wish to ask you? Anything that you see that's out of the ordinary? Anything that uh, other people have not done? 
uh, no, like absolutely not. No, we um, I looked at sort of schemes along as, as uh, Casey had shown from the um, from above, um, but there's nothing out of the ordinary with our proposal, really. OK, um, any member wishing to ask a question of Peter? So just two seconds. Uh, whatever they've done to my iPad this afternoon, it's rather good because I can now see everyone on one screen, which is amazing. Um, I'm not seeing any indications either electronically on my blue board or um, not. In which case, if I've not got any questions to the agent, um, I'm going to go straight to determination. So members, uh, any comments, please, before we go to a vote, please? No? No one wants to, no one wants to comment? OK. Uh, in that case, Claire, we will now go to record a vote on this matter, please. Uh, so it's usual rules apply, alphabetical order, for against abstention, please. OK, um, so Councillor Adams, starting with you, can you please confirm if you maintained your connection and whether you'll be voting for, against or abstaining from the vote? I'm voting for. Voting for. So can I, it was, did you say, Councillor Adams, that you were, that you had maintained your connection and you were voting for the application? Just clarity. Yes, Thank you. you. Um, moving next to Councillor, Councillor Brighty, um, did you maintain your IT connection and will you be voting for, against or abstaining? Yeah, I did maintain my connection, thanks very much, and I'll be voting in favour. Thank you. Councillor Greenwell, um, are you voting for, against, and did you maintain your connection? Councillor Greenwell may be on mute. Yeah. She frequently is. Victor, yes, sorry about that. Yes, I, I um, maintained connection and I will be voting for. Thank you. Councillor Lloyd, did you maintain your connection and will you be voting for, against or abstaining? I did and I'll be voting in favour. Thank you. Councillor Oliver, um, how will you be voting and did you maintain your IT connection? I maintain my IT connection, I'll be voting for. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor O'Mara, did you maintain your connection and how will you be voting? Maintain connection, voting for. Thank you. Councillor Smith, did you maintain your connection and how will you be voting? I maintain my connection and I'm voting for. Thank you. And lastly, Councillor Brain, did you maintain your connection and how will you be voting? I maintain connection and voted for. Um, I think some members may not have heard Councillor Adams vote. Um, so I just wanted to double check whether his, his signal's back up. I heard him say yes, but it was, but it was a um, slightly broken signal. So, uh, Councillor Adams, could you repeat your um, voting intention, um, please? Uh, yeah, I'm in support. We're voting for. OK, thank you very much. I heard that clearly then. Right, thank could you tally you. the votes, please, Claire, and uh, then give us a total? Certainly, Chair. The vote is unanimous. Um, all members are in favour of the application. OK, so that plan application for 80 Westcombe Park Road, London SE37 QS is approved. That is approved. Thank you very much. Uh, both the applicant and your the agent, Peter. And um, we now move on to, or move back, I should say, to item four on the agenda, which is land to the rear of 76 Vanborough Park, London SE 37JQ. Um, so let me just give the, sorry, the full reference as well. The full reference is 20 stroke 1557 stroke F. And the Office of Recommendation is to grant planning permission. Over to the officer presenting, please. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Can you see see my screen? Yes, indeed. Thank you. Okay. Um, so yes, yes, Chair. Um, planning permission is sought for the construction of a new um, part two um, part two and a half story uh, um, um, dwelling house with basement fronting onto House Heathway with off street parking and amenity space. Um, planning permission was previously granted under application sixteen zero four two eight F for a virtually identical scheme, but this development was not implemented within the three year time span of the planning consent. Since the granting of planning permission under application 16042.8F, there has been no significant change in adopted planning policy, apart from the recently adopted 2021 London plan, which replaces the 2016 London plan. Um, as set out in the report, 
As the council has not determined the application within the statutory time period, the applicant has lodged an appeal with the planning inspector on the ground of non-determination. Consequently, members are not being asked to determine the application tonight, but instead set out whether they would have been minded to grant or refuse planning permission if the appeal had not been lodged. This will then form the basis of the council position in responding to the appeal. Um, the application site is um, outlined in red and the proposed dwelling would be accessed from Heathway. Um, highlighted on this slide are also the little house um, in blue. And I've just done that because um, the, the wording of the little house is just to the right of it and sometimes people think that um, what is meant by the little house is the two squares there, but that's not the case. So the little house is, 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 is the area in blue. You also have there highlighted in, in um, green, you've got the um, little coach house, um, which is a site immediately adjoining the application site. You've also got nine to 11 um, Heathway, which is the site next to the um, little coach house. And then on the opposite side of the road, you've got um, the orchard um, cottage. Um, as set out in the planning history section report, planning permission was allowed at appeal for the development of 9 to 11 Heathway in Ju July 2010 as a result of planning permission being refused. Um, planning permission was granted in September 2019 for the redevelopment of the Little Coach House. And finally, planning permission was allowed on appeal in January 2020 for the redevelopment of Orchard Cottage to provide two times four bedroom dwelling houses um, as again, as a result of planning permission being refused. In allowing the appeal for 9 to 11 Heathway, the planning inspector attached um, conditions in respect of wheel washing and um, for vehicles associated with the construction of the development that was under condition 6 and that was of construction condition 9, but there were no further conditions um, related to um, how the proposed houses would be constructed. For the little coach house, a condition was attached in respect of, of a construction method statement for the basement, but as the basement element of the development was never implemented, this condition was not discharged. Finally, for Orchard Cottage, a condition in respect of a demolition and construction method statement was attached. This again, though, had a clause in respect of wheel washing for construction vehicles, but there were no other limitations placed in the grant of consent in respect of vehicle movements associated with the development or the hours of construction. So um, this is an aerial photograph of the site um, as set out in the report. Heathway is a private and unadopted road with this development happening in a piecemeal fashion due to the gradual development of the rear gardens of larger houses um, that front under Vanber Park to the north and St John's Park to the south. The application site is one of the few remaining plots that, that, have not, that has not yet been developed. Um, the site is located within the Blackheath Conservation Area and the buffer zone to the Maritime Greenwich World Heritage Site. Within the Blackheath Conservation Area character appraisal, it states that Heathway is an informal back lane to the rear of Randall Park and St John's Park, and that there is no historical significance other than the coach house and the little house. Neither of these buildings are statutory or locally listed, and as I've just explained in the slide before, the, the coach house, or the little coach house as it's also known as, was redeveloped under application 143682. Um, so this is a close-up area of the application site. You can see on the left, the garage at the bottom, just um, where my, my cursor is, um, which belongs to um, 77 Vandal Park. Next to that is 3 Heathway, which consists of this two-storey building here. And then next to that, and next to the garage, a single-storey um, um, building. Opposite that, you can see um, a rather large sort of construction vehicle there, and obviously what was um, Orchard Cottage as it's been uh, um, demolished and the site is being rebuilt. Next to that is the, um, the little house, which is just there. Um, and then um, on the um, opposite side of the site, you've got again the um, little coach house, and then next little coach house, you've got nine to 11 um, Heathway. Um, members will have seen a photograph um, that was provided yesterday of a stag beetle in the rear garden of Nine Heathway. And um, while stag beetles are a protected species, there is no evidence that the stag beetle are found on the application site. Um, irrespective of this, if members decided that they would have been minded to grant planning permission, then conditions could be attached 
so as to establish if stag beetles are found on the application site, and if so, for a, a strategy to be put in place to ensure their um, um, protection. So this photograph is of the entrance to Heathway from um, Vandal Park. Um, under the applicant's construction method statement, vehicles associated with the development would enter Heathway from Strathedon Road and exit um, onto um, Vandal Park. Um, this photo is, um, shows the single story building and belonging to number three, um, Heathway um, on, on the left with the garage belonging to 77 Vamba Park in the background. Behind that and just where the um, willow tree is, is the application site. And then behind that, you can see um, the little coach house. And then you can just see on the right, um, the front um, facing wall of number nine and 11 um, Heathway. This is a close up view of the application site, which is located between the garage belonging to 77 Vamba Park and the little coach house. Um, you can see the willow tree, which is to be retained. And um, although it is proposed for tree works to take place um, on this, um, it's proposed a three meter crown lift, so as to enable the development to take place. The um, council's tree officers raised no objection to these works. And this is just a further slide of the um, willow tree. And then we've got now is a reverse view back towards the garage um, at the rear of 77 Bamber Park, and then also number three, um, Heathway in the background. And then further on down, um, Heathway again, looking back to the side, and you can see um, more clearly there, nine to 11 Heath, Heathway, and then the little coach house next to that um, with the application site um, um, in the background. Um, these photos are basically within the application site. Um, so the, the photograph in the top left hand corner is basically um, halfway down the application within the application site, looking towards the um, rear gardens of the properties in Vanbo Park. And um, there's approximately a, a 31 meter back to back distance be um, 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 between, between the sites. On the right hand side, you've then got the entrance to the site and you can see there the um, flank wall of um, the little coach house development and um, the flank wall of the uh, uh, um, garage belonging to 77 Vanva Park. And then the bottom left hand photograph is um, basically uh, looking back down the site um, towards Heathway. And there are a number of trees on the site um, which the um, applicant is um, looking to um, fell. And um, we'll come on to that a little bit more um, um, detail, but obviously one of those trees is this tree in the right hand side photograph, which you can see is heavily um, covered um, in uh, 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 um, climbing um, 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 ivy. Um, this photograph is basically looking towards the rear of the little coach house. And then this photo, these photographs basically again show the um, garage at the bottom of 77 Vander Park and then you can just start to see the flank wall of the single story building belonging to Heathway. And then the other two photographs just continue on showing um, that um, flank um, wall. And um, so the next two slides, slides 15 and 16, basically um, just show the more um, modern sort of development that, that's taken um, place on, on Heathway. You now, as stated, Heathway is made up of a variety of building style and sizes. Um, so the building in front of us is number 22 Heathway, um, which is a, a three-story building, contemporary design, contemporary materials, and also it has a, a roof terrace area there with glazing. Um, we've then got number um, 29 on the left-hand side, which is again, is a, is a, is a more modern contemporary building. Um, again, three stories. Um, and then on the right of that, you've got number 28, which is, um, it, it's a more austere uh, um, uh, um, scheme there, but again, it's 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 a, a, a three-story uh, um, um, building. So um, this slide shows the previously approved site location plan, and the only change between the current application and the previously approved scheme is the small sliver of land which you can see running up the um, left-hand side of the the site towards um, the front. Um, side entrance gate and um, belonging to um, 76 um, Vanba Park 
um, this has been um, removed from the scheme and we'll come back to that later on when we talk a little bit more about the um, construction method statement. Um, so there is the um, proposed um, site location plan and you can see that that, that, that small sliver um, which was running up the side of the site up here is no longer part of the application site. Um, so what we've got next is, is, is a, a grouping of slides showing um, the, 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 the development as approved against what is proposed now. Um, so you can see there that um, as previously proposed and um, there was a basement and they currently propose a small basement again, which would be um, located um, at the um, front of the site. And there's nothing in, in policy terms which um, states that a, 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 a basement um, would be contrary to policy. These slides show again on the left the previously approved ground floor and on the right the proposed um, ground floor plan. Um, again, um, both schemes are proposing an open plan layout with internal steps down to the, the rear section of the ground floor. Um, the, the main changes really here are that the projecting window at the front of the site has been omitted and we'll see that a little bit more clearly in the uh, um, 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 elevation drawings. Um, there's also um, a car parking space and bin storage provided at the ground floor. Um, the size of the ground floor and the, and the layout in general mirrors that of the previous consent. So moving on with the um, previous, uh, the, to, the, to the first floor again, and um, they're almost identical, identical to um, what was um, considered previously. Slight change in that the um, rear um, projection, which um, is literally this section here, if you can see where my, my, my cursor is, that has been omitted this time. Um, and instead there is a small terrace um, area, which is basically in this location um, here. And then also, again, at first floor level on the front, the, the, the protruding um, bay window has been um, um, removed. And again, we'll see that more uh, clearly later on um, in the presentation. Um, moving to the second floor, and again, there's no real difference there between the previously approved and, and the proposed M scheme. The development would differ, sorry, the development would uh, again deliver a three bed, six person dwelling. Um, dwelling would comply with the internal and external space standards as are required by uh, um, adopted planning policy, and that's set out in more detail at paragraph 8.42 to 8.51 of the report. So moving on to the roof plan, um, what you can see here is the, the, the major chain is actually the increasing number of solar panels on the roof. So previously, um, there were six proposed, and there's now eight going to be um, um, and proposed. You can also see that they are set, you know, well back from both the front and the rear, uh, 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 rear um, um, building line. And um, as such, whilst they will be seen on the elevation drawings, which, you'll, which, which are coming up um, in, in reality, because they're so set, far set back from the front and rear uh, uh, um, walls of a dwelling that they wouldn't be uh, um, um, particularly visible from um, the street scene. Um, and you can sort of see that more clearly in this section drawing. And um, you can see that the um, existing solar panels are just there and there with my um, cursor is. And then when you look at the proposed section, you can again see where, where they are, are, are um, situated. You can also see that the overall scale bulk of the development um, remains, remains the same. And again, when you come to the elevations, you'll, 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 you'll see that again. Um, what this also shows is the position of the glass balustrade that was allowed by the planning inspector for the um, um, second floor um, at the front. So um, on the, on the right-hand side image, um, that's, that's the area just there where my um, cursor is, is now. Um, under the, the, the previous scheme, um, it was agreed at committee um, that the, 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 the balisade screening for the, the um, terrace area would be increased to a height of 1.6 metres, so it's why it's slightly higher than, than on the approved section. But also at that meeting, members decided that the, um, the, 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 the extent of the, the balisade should be set back three metres from the front building line so as to um, ensure there was no um, loss of privacy or overlooking to the occupiers of the little house on the opposite side um, of the property and members will have seen um, in the um, planning history of the report that um, the, the then applicant 
um, lodged an appeal with the planning inspector to challenge some of the conditions and that the council um, had placed on that consent. One of them was to do what was in respect of the um, and balustrade and the planning inspector decided that whilst there was a need for, for the balustrade and agreed with the height of 1.6 metres, it was not felt that the um, balustrade needed to be set back three metres from the front building line to ensure that there'd be um, no adverse impact um, on the residential amenity, the occupiers of the little house. So instead he allowed the, uh, the uh, um, um, balcony, the balustrade, um, to um, basically be where it is um, shown um, at this moment in time on the proposed section drawing. So um, moving to the next slide. So this is the um, front and uh, rear, sorry, the, the, the previously approved and proposed front elevation. Must apologize that my um, PowerPoint skills aren't great because I haven't been able to uh, um, um, fully align um, these drawings. But basically the overall height scale and bulk of the building um, is, is is, is the same as previously. Um, previously, the um, scheme would have had a height of 7.7 .7 meters. That's the height of the proposed scheme. Um, you can also see um, the changes in the front elevation there. So you can, so the, um, the protruding um, front um, windows at, at um, ground and first floor level have been removed with, with, with flush windows. And also the um, size of the windows have been um, modified as well slightly. You can also see more clearly the, the slight increase in the um, height of the front uh, um, um, balustrade there. This is um, the um, rear elevation, again, as approved and as proposed. Um, as with um, the previous scheme, um, because of the, the slight change in land level, you can see there, um, the oval height was to be 8.9 metres, and that's the um, height of the scheme um, as proposed. Um, Again, the overall um, design and appearance of the dwelling would remain predominantly unchanged. Um, there are some slight changes, as I said, the, um, the protruding um, bay at first floor level has been removed. So you've got a flush um, 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 elevation there, but instead you've got a slight, a very, very small sort of terrace there, which is well set off and um, the boundaries with the uh, uh, um, next door properties. And again, and there's, there's a screen there. And also at second floor level, you can say the, the window detail there has been modified um, slightly as well. And just finally, the, um, ground, the sort of lower ground floor element there, the oval height of, of that has been reduced from 3.6 meters to um, 3.4 meters. So if you can just see where my cursor is again, the lower ground floor element is that, that element there. So the oval height of that um, has been reduced um, slightly. Um, as stated at the start of the presentation, and the Blackheath Conservation Area Character Appraisal states that Heathrow has no historical significance apart from the coach house and the little house. Um, as also shown in earlier photographs, Heathrow has a mix of architectural styles and sizes. And whilst the, the, the proposal remains um, contemporary in its design, it's still considered that it remains acceptable um, and that it would not have any adverse impact on the character and appearance of Heathrow the Blackheath Conservation Area or the buffer zone to the World Heritage Site itself. Um, this slide shows development as viewed from the um, little coach house. So the little coach house is the is this building situated here, just where where my um, mouth is, mouse is, and behind that you can see the um, proposed uh, 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 um, uh, um, um, property. Um, you can see that the protoven would still protrude past the rear building line of the little coach house by um, 3.7 metres at first floor level and 2.7 metres at second floor level. And um, whilst the um, ground floor would extend past the rear building line by seven metres overall due to the height of the boundary wall and the change in land level, and um, this would not be particularly visible. So there's a pro approximately um, a, a, a 500 millimeter sort of difference there between the boundary wall and the top of that um, lower ground floor um, ground floor level there. And this slide shows the development as viewed from um, Free Heathway. So you can see the, um, the the outline of the garage there at the bottom um, of 77 Vamba Park, which sits in between um, the two sites. Um, in terms of residential amenity, um, um, consisting of daylight and sunlight, um, outlook, enclosure and privacy, it's constant that as with the previous development, there would be no adverse impact. Um, 
in terms of the impact on the properties around Bamber Park, um, due to the separation distance, which is around 31 metres, it's considered that there would be um, no impact at all. In terms of daylight and sunlight, a um, report has been submitted with the application, um, and this shows um, that all the relevant windows of the adjoining property would not be affected by, by the scheme. So what, what this slide is showing, you've got um, on, on the left, the, the windows that the daylight and sunlight survey looked at, and then um, on the right hand side, it, it's sort of setting out um, the level of um, existing and proposed um, vertical su sunlight level and, and, and the level that is retained um, and that then the, the, um, the development would not um, impact um, those properties um, the, and the, those windows would all stay in line with um, um, British um, um, standard. Um, in terms of overlooking and privacy, um, discussed already the issue of the um, the, the, the front um, terrace area um, in terms of um, the little house on the opposite side of the road and how that was considered by the planning inspector to be acceptable. Um, when the scheme was considered previously by, by, by members, members considered that um, the development would have no impact on uh, um, the occupiers of the little coach house in terms of loss of privacy due to um, uh, uh, um, overlooking or an increased sense of closure. And it's still considered that that is the um, case in this instance. So the next two slides, um, what you'll have is, you've got here is a proposed 3D Im image of the proposed development as well as the proposed material palette. Um, the material palette is considered to be acceptable and would uh, result in a um, high quality scheme and the proposed materials are to be secured by uh, um, condition. Um, and also within the scheme, there's proposals for green roofs and again, um, the green roofs would be um, secured via um, planning condition. As with the previous developments proposed to fell five trees and those five trees are the ones um, outlined in um, Red, um, when the application was originally submitted, it, it um, utilized the previous tree report. And this report though was only valid for a 12 month period now such an updated report was prepared. Pardon me. And this, this re revised report um, confirms that the five trees that are to be felled are poor quality and that um, no, no objection has been raised by the council's tree officer to those proposals. Um, as stated at the start of the presentation, the applicant would be looking to cut out works to the um, willow tree, which is at the front of the site situated here, um, which again, the tree officer has um, not objected to. And um, whilst this tree does not fall within the site, it does overhang the application site and any issues over the carrying out of these works is a private um, matter. Um, appropriate measures to protect the willow tree during construction and all, the, all other trees um, within the site which are to be retained would be um, secured via a planning condition. Um, so returning to the previously approved site plan, um, one of the objections raised um, by from residents is that under the, under the previous scheme, um, there, was, there was an understanding or belief that um, the, the materials, et cetera, associated with the development were to be delivered via Vanbrugh Park and that Heathrow was not to be used. Um, whilst this is the case, um, um, due to uh, oh, sorry, um, this this was the case um, due to the um, sliver of land incorporated within the site, um, which led up to the side entrance gate. Um, whilst this is whilst the application site boundary is noted on, on this layout, officers have, have reviewed the um, previous submissions, cannot find any reference um, in terms of the design access statement or any other statement confirming that um, that was to be, be the case. Also, there's no reference to this in the recorded minutes of the meeting. Um, finally, whilst a condition requiring construction method statement was attached to this consent, this did not state that the delivery of building materials for the development had to take place from Vamba Park. Whilst it may have been the intention of the previous applicant to utilize Vamba Park, the current application cannot be refused just because the current application chooses not to um, um, follow um, um, this approach. What has to be assessed is whether the current proposals are acceptable or not. The applicant, as part of their construction method statement, provided photographs of the side entrance gate um, um, at number 76 Vamba Park. 
and and this sort of shows its narrow narrow nature um and also with the separation distance to the application site of approximately 31 meters that it's not feasible to utilize this in conjunction with the scheme officers have also taken photographs of the side access gates belonging to 75 74 73 and 72 vanber park and these are the properties that back onto the little coach house and development now at nine at two um, 11 Heathways. These, ac gate, these ac access gates are just as narrow as that at number 76 and would suggest therefore that when these properties were constructed that Heathway would have been used um, during the, during the imp implementation of the scheme. Um, clearly the impact of the um, development during construction is a material consideration and it's not denied that Heathway is a narrow and constrained road as demonstrated by this photograph from one of the objectors. However, this does not mean that Heathway cannot be used and cannot be used safely. It is, it is also known that Heathway is a private road and it only serves those properties along it and does not act as a through road for, for um, other traffic. So the level of vehicle movement along Heathway will, will be uh, um, um, limited. What can also be seen from the next two slides is that vehicles um, have been traveling along um, Heathway as part of the orchard um, cottage development. And you can quite see some, some quite large uh, um, vehicles. And that also on this slide, um, that particularly one on the left, that sort of large uh, machinery has also been um, brought to the site and that would have had to come along, along Heathway. Um, also that um, the photograph on, on the left is obviously taken um, from when the little coach house was being developed and this was a photograph from, from the previous presentation in 2016 which also um, shows um, machinery on type which again due to its size one would assume would have been um, brought to the site um, via um, Heathway. Um, the applicant has submitted a detailed construction method statement um, and whilst the development would require deliveries, et cetera, to be made on street because of the constraint nature of the application site, the applicant has set out a detailed um, traffic management structure of the site, which is considered acceptable. And this is set out in detail at power 8.96 of the report. And it covers in terms of um, 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 booking in process for vehicles to arrive at the site, um, uh, uh, um, Banksman's being there to ensure that the vehicle, vehicles are brought, brought along Heathway in a safe manner, um, process in place for um, if um, an um, 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 emergency vehicle arrives and needs a need, a need needs to e e e exit the site, um, etc. In addition, the um, applicant has confirmed the post construction house and delivery house would not be made, would, would, would be made outside of peak time. And again, it would be proposed um, a condition in um, respect of them. Um, they've also set out a projected um, phases of the development and associate timescales for these works. These have also set out the anticipated number of vehicle movements expected for each phase of each phases of development on a daily basis, as well as the anticipated um, time periods for um, those visits. As can be seen from that, and phase three will see the um, longest time that vehicles will be at site, which would equate to 18 minutes across the day as a whole. Um, on the basis of the um, information submitted within the construction method statement, um, officers are satisfied um, that um, the implementation of the development is, is being um, um, carried out as, 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 as best as can be possible and that they are doing everything that they can to, redu to reduce um, any adverse impact, etc., on residential men to a pedestrian and highway safety to as low a level um, as possible, and therefore what is being proposed is supported. Um, that's the end of the uh, uh, um, presentation, members, um, and it's over to members to um, consider further. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, members, over to uh, ourselves. Uh, Questions, I'll get my board up, just one, two seconds. Uh, questions to the officer at all. Does anyone have questions to the officer? Um, Councillor Brighty, I can see your hands go. Oh, they've changed them. Well, they, they've changed the colour of my hands on my screen. So it's a yellow hand now. Councillor Brighty, so you're now a Lib Dem. So um, 
Terrible. Perish, to perish, the thought. To perish the thought. Terrible, terrible. <laughs> thing to to anyone. Um, followed by Councillor uh, Lolivar, please. Um, over to um, Councillor Brighty, please. Yeah, thank you very much, Chair. And uh, I'll ignore the uh, the previous insult. Um, <laughs> so, um, I wanted to ask the officer just to say a little bit more about um, a couple of things, really. The non-determination um, aspect of this, which is uh, it's now going to be... You just need to confirm, really, why we have, we're in that position where we're, in fact, not making a decision tonight. Uh, in fact, we're just making a recommendation to the planning inspector, as, as I understand it. Um, why has that happened? And can you confirm for, for, for anybody who is listening to this what we're actually doing tonight? We're not making a decision. We're making effectively a recommendation. Um, also, you've just shown very recently the, um, the timetable for the arrival um, of uh, construction vehicles in, um, in Heathway. And uh, I'm amazed that they um, think they're going to spend so little time. I don't know what they're going. I mean, those huge vehicles loading or unloading, where are they doing? They're going to do it in a record time, I would have thought. And I wonder how realistic the time scales they put there are. Uh, and finally, um, I've seen um, a mention, um, I think, in one of the objections that um, elsewhere in Heathway, um, um, on single plots, and this is a very small plot, um, normally um, they say that only a single storey building would have been allowed in the past, whereas this is two storeys. Um, and I'd, I'd like your comment on that, please. Mm. Thank you. Just before um, Neil gave, gives his answer, uh, perhaps on the timings of the loading and unloading and banksman and all of that, that might be a question, perhaps, Jeff, if you'd accept this, uh, my comments, to ask of the uh, the agent, Mr. Rooney, when it's his turn. Or oh, would you prefer? Um, well, perhaps, the we could, perhaps we can do both. I think, I mean, the officer's presenting this to us as um, being acceptable. So I think it would be useful to hear okay. from him. Thanks. Yes. Um, so, so yes, it is um, non uh, appeal on non determination. Um, basically, um, there has been um, significant amount of discussion um, with the applicant um, over over this scheme, and um, particularly in terms of the construction method statement. Um, and you know that that's been them um, responding to um, queries that officers have had, and also um, concerns that have been raised by uh, um, 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 residents. Um, the um, applicant has the right to appeal on the grounds of non-determination where a decision isn't made within the statute time period, which is eight weeks in this instance, and, and they have up to six months to do that after the eight-week period has expired. So the, they, they've actually done it on, on literally the last week of the six-month period. So they have worked proactively with the council as, as much as possible. And, and, and they've left it to the um, last minute to um, appeal on the grounds of non-determination, which is, which is their, um, their right. Um, I mean, the council has tried to work, work with them to get matters resolved, and, and, and that's a requirement um, of the NPPF at paragraph 38, which sort of sets out that local planning authorities should work proactively, work proactively with applicants. So, you know, we, we've, tried, we've tried to resolve all the issues that that um, we had that, that residents feel um, but it's just taken a, a period of time uh, um, to, um, to achieve that and as I say the applicant um, as, as, is, as is their right um, have decided um, um, late in the process and um, to appeal on non non um, uh, um, um, determination um, secondly in terms of, of the time scales you know, I'll be, I'll be honest, that they um, will be estimates, you know, it's, you know, I'm not going to say that each, each vehicle will be sort of um, 10 minutes, but, you know, or, or 50 minutes or um, 20 minutes. But I think we've got to remember this is just a, a single house. We have got a very, very um, detailed um, construction method statement. It's 77 pages long. It, it covers a variety, a wide variety of, of um, matters. Um, and obviously it's, um, phases one to three, um, which will have the majority of vehicles um, coming to and from the site, which is um, when the actual um, uh, groundworks are being done, the shell of the building be, uh, uh, or, or, or constructed. After that, it's predominantly just, just the fit, fit out and the number of vehicles um, after that page will 
stage will um, drop off uh, um, 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 drastically. Um, in terms of the site size, the building on the site, um, I mean, obviously we've approved this scheme, this scheme, scheme before, and it was considered acceptable in terms of height, scale, um, and bulk. There are numerous examples up and down um, Heathway of two-story, three-story houses. Um, I can't actually really think there are that many single-story houses actually along long Heathway. So in terms of height, scale, and bulk, um, you know, in principle, you know, the, the nature of the development in in line with 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 the um, um, character of of the road. Does that answer your questions, Councillor Bradgy? Uh, will do for now, thank you very much. Okay, uh, Councillor Lullivar, please, had a hand up first, followed by Councillor uh, Greenwell. Um, it might be slightly building on Jessica's question about, uh, also Councillor Bright's question about um, the non-determination. I just wanted to make sure that, um, so first thing, can I, I just wanted to run through my understanding of um, the application. So it was, the application came in and it was approved on my understanding was on the basis of a construction method statement being provided and I think there was a delay in that being provided and then there was some time when we were waiting for a construct CMS to be submitted then I think there was also a refusal because insufficient details were supplied, supplied in that CMS so from what I'm understanding is you know it was the the actual application in itself had been approved we were just awaiting the, that that supplying of that additional information what i understand that hadn't unless that has come in what, from what i understand that hadn't been kind of officially submitted and approved unless correct me if if i've misunderstood that you're now saying there's a detailed cms so i'm a bit unclear there yet yeah, just um so as far as i understand there was nothing in place and then because we're hitting this three-year uh, expiry date the applicant chooses to put an appeal which is uh, on non-determination and and is what I'm what I understand non-determination is that we, we've not made a decision so I'm trying to I'm a bit confused here because we have made a decision okay. from my understanding so, the applicants failed to submit right so so planning permission was originally granted um, in 2000 and well it was under a 2016 application that consent is valid for three years. So the applicant has to start works. The works don't have to be completed. They have to start works within that three year period. That is subject to them discharging all relevant conditions that are required for, for that consent. The applicant, or not necessarily this applicant, but, but the previous applicant had attempted to um, previously had attempted to discharge the construction method statement, which was attached to the 2016 application. Okay, um, the council refused that because it considered that the level of detail provided was was not up to standard. The current applicant um, again looked to um, submit um, the construction method statement, and again we weren't happy with that um, at, at, at the time. Um, and basically result of that, whilst they had done some an, an initial groundwork, I would say, the applicant was told that because you hadn't discharged the construction method statement condition, you can't say that you discharge all the relevant conditions and therefore the works you've done don't count as implementing the development. So what we've got now is the current application and within that application, the applicant has submitted a detailed construction method statement. So if members were, were if, if, if members were either looking to make a decision or setting to, to approve or, or because of the appeal on non-determination, setting out how they would be mindful to, in terms of making the decision, whether that would have been to approve or, or refuse the application. If it was to approve the application, then there would have been a condition on there or conditions there relating to the construction method statement that's been submitted with the current application and ensure that the development was implemented in accordance, accordance with those details. I think also within the draft conditions in there, I think I put in one amending the hours of uh, construction on the site. Um, and I think, although I hadn't put one in there, members might want to consider that just to clarify about when um, um, 
deliveries to the site can take place to ensure that they do, would take place outside of, 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 of those um, um, pressure moments, which is generally first in the morning and, and after school, etc. And one just one more part to add to that. Can I just so the so my understanding is the not the the applicants uh, seeing this non determination on the basis that they've not been able to, I guess, CMS has not been wasn't provided. They weren't able to start works. A application has then expired. So is is it the issue more of questioning the the validity of having to provide a CMS or no. the piece itself and no. sorry just the other part was in your conclusion here so this is kind of the recommendation that council officers are making because as you said we're not making a decision here it will go to the inspectorate but we still uh do we still consider the cms like a, an important and valid part of of that decision because it's not so clear in the conclusion the the, the the construction method statement is a material consideration and it's part of the current application the reason why we're at non-determination is, as I say, the council has a statutory time period for dealing with applications, which is eight weeks. That eight weeks has now expired. And the, the government in their legislation and through, through, through the planning inspector allows applicants to, to basically make an appeal to the planning inspector to ask the planning inspector to determine application where the council hasn't um, reached a um, decision on, on the scheme. So this is the two, this is this is the 2020 application we're talking about here, Councillor. The 2016 application is is in effect um, dead in terms of they in, in terms of that they can't implement it because the time period to implement that has expired. But for the applicant to lodge an appeal on non-determination, they must do that within six months of the statutory eight week period expiring. expiring. The applicant has, 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 has lodged the appeal on determination, I think with, with some like a week to go for the expiry of the, um, of, of, of the six month period. If they hadn't done that, they couldn't have made an appeal on non-determination and ultimately to some extent, the application could then sit um, not determined by the council for a um, um, indefinite period of time. So they're literally, they, they've, they've to some extent appealed the application just to cover their their um, um, position to some extent. All right, thank you. So Lollivar, does that answer your questions? Yeah. I think it does. I might, maybe I'll ask more of um, uh, later, but yeah. I... Okay, thank you. And now Councillor Greenwell was last on my list. Oh no, yes, yes. Councillor Greenwell followed by Councillor Adams, please. Yes, uh, thank you, Chair. Um, can, just, there are th I've got three sort of questions. The first one is, Neil, um, apparently the occupational therapist said that the parking space falls marginally Below the required size, does does is is that make it still legal? Um, it 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 does. I'm not I'm not sure why the occupational therapist has said that because when I've looked at the the, the, the drawings, um, and I've measured I've measured off the depth of the car parking space on 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 the plans, I get a a a depth a, an average depth of, of around four point seven meters from the plans. Um, now, a, a standard car parking space is normally 4.2 metres in depth. OK. All right. Um, the next question, can I just go back? You know, you talk about the little house. What actually, what is the distance? Is the little house, just to go back because it can become confusing, does the little house actually face this new development? <sighs> Um, if I can, if I share my screen again. Um, Actually, let me, let me utilise. No, not that one. Um, this. Uh, 
So you can see the application site in red there, Councillor. Uh, yeah, sorry. Can you see the application site? The application yes, site yes. in red there. Yes, the little house is opposite. What opposite, is the dis which is the, the little house is, is the building outlined in blue. That's right. So I just wondered what was how is that going to be affected? What is the view going to be from the little house to the well, main well, house? Well, well, there's a separation distance, I think, if our memory serves me right, of, of around 10 metres. Um, and um, obviously, the, when the previous application was a, approved, um, there was concern um, in terms of not necessarily... Um, outlook or enclosure from um, the little house but loss of privacy due to overlooking and that's mm. why the committee um, when granting permission put a condition on requiring the terrace area at second floor level to be reduced so that the balustrade was set three meters back from the front building line. The then applicant um, appealed that condition to the planning inspectorate because they felt it was uh, uh, um, um, unreasonable the planning inspectorate considered it and the planning inspectorate considered that um, there was no need for the balustrade to be set back three metres and that the balustrade could be on the front building line as the applicant um, desired and that by doing that there would be no impact on residential amenity in terms of overlooking or privacy. So it's, it's, it's exactly the same situation now as what the planning inspectorate concluded was acceptable previously. Thank you. And you had a third question, I think. Uh, yes. My Councillor. third question is, can I go back to, you referred to a willow tree being removed, Neil. No, um, no. I mean... No, the, 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 the uh, willow tree is not being removed. What the it's applicant not. is proposing is, is, is to do some tree work to that, so, so they do a crown lift of three metres. Okay. That's primarily because the willow tree overhangs their, their site. Okay, that's fine. No problem. Thank you, Neil. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Pat, for those interesting questions. Councillor Adams, please. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, two quick questions. Um, I take it there's been no start on site on any of these previous applications. No one's dug a trench or cleared the site or anything like that. Um, um, and the, the, the applicant did do some, some um, groundworks um, and, tr and to try and sort of claim that the 2016 application had, had been implemented, but because they hadn't discharged the construction method statement condition, um, the council gave a firm line and said that that, 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 that consent had not, had, had not been uh, um, 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 implemented. So in other words, they were acting illegally at the time they dug the trench. They hadn't had the benefit of planning consent at that. You could, you could say that, but as, soon as, but, but as soon as we told them to stop, um, within a reasonable time, they stopped. Okay, and you and you could see from those those, those photographs from 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 within the site that the site's um, uh, um, uh, um, um, heavily overgrown, um, and that was you know you couldn't really see that any works had actually taken place. And of course, we're in a conservation area, so all trees are protected. So, presumably, they've applied for consent. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks very much. Did they answer your questions, Norman? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, just a, a quick question from my. Oh no, sorry, it's my other uh, another question from Mariam. But before Mariam comes back, I'm going to ask my own question of Neil. Um, just on on the um, potential condition of deliveries. I mean, if I was the site, if I was the site ganger or the the site manager, the thought that I've got a crew of women and men turning up at eight o'clock and then having to hang about until ten o'clock for uh, concrete bricks electrical wiring things like that how realistic is that to ask a, a builder to do that a developer to do that do you think again it might be something i perhaps i should be asking uh, the, the i mean the, I, I think i think that's that's something more more for the applicant to uh, okay address. i mean they they they, they 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 are clearly aware of the sensitive nature of, of, of heathway and as i say they're trying to put in as many measures as they can to minimize the um, disruption that the building works would cause OK, let me then jump back straight away to Councillor Lolliver, who wants another question. Councillor Lolliver. Thank you. Sorry, just on the trees element. Um, is it, um, um, there was a, there's a tree that you talked about, the one they wanted to crown. I think it was this, the silver birch. Yeah. Am I the willow. Willow. the willow. Was that the willow? Yeah, it's a willow. 
Okay. Um, so is is that I think from I understand from the picture uh, the kind of picture that you showed before that's the one that is on kind of Heathway in between the two properties. So am I right in thinking that? Um, vehicles potentially will be going through that access point. I know that the I think some residents have expressed it preferring going from Vamba Park, but if the applicant is proposing oh. his Heathway, I'm trying to just understand because one of the things I know that we're talking about protecting trees, but if you've got kind of like heavy vehicles driving over tree roots, that in itself is pretty damaging. Trees don't often survive. I'm just trying to understand if if it's actually where where the actual construction vehicles will be driving and over. Right. So, so basically, as a result of this, if, if, if permission was granted, and um, because of the constrained nature of the site, all deliveries would be made on street. So, so vehicles would come along Heathway, they'd park outside the site, and they would be unloaded there. So the vehicles will not be going onto the site. So in that, in that, that respect, um, you know, the, 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 there, would, there would be no impact on the um, willow tree. Um, so there, 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 will, there would also be, I think, it's probably the last condition proposed um, to ensure that, irrespective of that, tree protection measures are installed for both the willow trees and the trees at the rear of the site to ensure that whilst construction works are, are taking place, that those trees are um, 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 protected further. Okay, cool. So they would be parking on, the, the larger vehicles would be parking on Wavambra Park? No, all, 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 all vehicles would, 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 would deliver to the site on Heathway. But they won't be going entering into the site. So they would not enter the site. They would not, they would not, they would not enter in, into the front of, or the, or the land, which is in front of the, the garage at 77 um, Bandra Park, which, which, which fronts onto Heathway. So in that sense, yeah, as you say, definitely protecting for the trees, but I guess and I think that was one of the concerns that potentially was raised in the construction methods, method statement was um, uh, kind of blocking the entire road potentially then. Well, and that's, and that's why the applicant has gone through, through in, in some detail to set out the traffic management system in terms of how it will manage vehicles come and leave and leave the site, set out, you know, when vehicles are, are, are to arrive, time period, etc. Um, and obviously as part of that to inform residents when um, those vehicles are going to arrive so that so as to minimize the level of um, uh, um, um, disruption. Thank you. Does that answer your question, Councillor? Yeah, that did, thank you. Thank you very much. I'll just have a quick scoot up and down the board again. I can't see anyone. In that case, we'll move on to um, um, speakers who are speaking against and uh, we do have, as I said right at the beginning of the meeting, uh, we do have a list of people, both two, two societies and then individual local residents. Um, again, I'll repeat my own uh, message at the, from the beginning of the meeting. Um, if you feel that someone in front of you who's spoken previously um, has already said what you want to say, please indicate that to be the case. Uh, it's not trying to deprive you of your right to speak, but it would deprive us of the right to get an accurate picture. Uh, without all the repetition. Um, but um, the two societies both have four minutes each and all local residents have two minutes each. I will be timing those quite assiduously. And um, so over to Maggie uh, Greville from the Westcombe Society, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, when we were asked to comment on, on this application, the Westcombe Society was asked to um, to particularly look at the impact on the conservation area and um, discuss this with the Blackheath Society. And because our position is very much the same in support of um, the, the residents, um, Andrew from the Blackheath Society is going to present um, our thoughts on this. Right, so you, you, you're, you're giving your time up to the Westcombe Society, yeah, yes? Right. Sorry, the Blackheath Society, yes? Yes. Yes. OK, that's fine. In that case, uh, thank you very much, Maggie. I will then give, um, I'm quite happy to do that, take Chair's action and give seven or eight minutes to Blackie. So uh, off you go. Good evening. Um, my name is Andrew Johnson. I'm a volunteer at the Blackie Society Planning Group, and I'm speaking on behalf of the Blackie Society and the Westcombe Society. And both societies fully support the objections of the residents. 
Notwithstanding the pressure on local authorities to increase the housing stock, we contend that the harm to the conservation area through overdevelopment and destruction of trees and wildlife habitats is of overriding concern, and we therefore urge rejection of the application. The Council is pledged under policy DHH to only grant permission for proposals which preserve or enhance the character of the conservation area. We contend that the application does neither. Aerial photographs show the amount of tree cover which enhances the appearance of the local area and provides important wildlife habitat. Heathway on a doctored road and is notable for its rural aspect and the green spaces between buildings, which are a characteristic of the conservation area. The proposal pays no regard to this element with an application that would fill the entire width of the site and result in considerable loss of trees. The massing and bulk of the proposal are of an inappropriate scale and mass for such a constrained site and contribute to the impairment of the semi-rural nature of Heathway and the conservation area, exacerbated by the removal of trees. The Albury Cultural Impact Assessment details five trees, or, though apparently one has been omitted, that are to be removed, explaining that they are, they are of low quality, not highly visible. We would contest this as the site contains a good variety of moderately mature trees. Only one of these is to be re replaced and this considerable tree loss will erode the sense of green space. They may also be damaged to the neighbour's tree despite protection measures considering how close it is to the construction site, including digging a basement. The local plan, policy HC, concerns backland and infill development. It states that proposals will only be granted where there is not significant loss of wildlife habitats, particularly trees. Stag beetles and bats have been reported in the area, and both of these are protected species, and within a conservation area, this is of particular significance. To damage the habitat would be contrary to core strategy policy OSF, ecological factors, which states that particular attention should be paid to the retention of trees and the protection and enhancement of natural and ecological features, including wildlife habitats. This policy states the need for appropriate replacement of trees, including size, coverage and species, yet the plans show that only one tree is to be planted in place of six. Trees provide not only an attractive vista, but also important wildlife habitats and contribute to carbon reduction. Given that Greenwich is currently considering its carbon neutral plan, it seems irresponsible to consider this amount of degradation. Should you be minded to approve this application, then the construction method statement is key. We know that one has been provided and that the report to the committee recommends approval as is. However, in view of the great concern to residents, the sensitivity of the site and the difficulty in devising an adequate CMS we are of the opinion that the construction method statement should not be approved without a site visit on the part of the committee and a close evaluation of, this, of its suitability. We recognise that arranging site visits in recent months has been challenging. However, with COVID measures now being relaxed, we do believe that this should be possible. We note also that in relation to the previous application from 2016, the applicant was not in a position to present an acceptable CMS which was approved by the council to meet the condition imposed. Thank you, Chair. That is the end of my presentation. Thank you very much indeed. Um, questions, please, for the combined uh, Westcombe and Blackie Society uh, statement, please. Um, let me just whiz through my board. Uh, any questions? Yes, I've got one from Councillor Pat Greenwell. Off mute, please, Pat. You're still on mute, Pat. Is that unmuted? You are now, yes. Thank you. Uh, it's, sorry, it's my uh, appliance. It, I don't really know whether this should be to the resident or to Neil, but we talked. the resident talked about bats. Do we know if a bat survey has been carried out in the past or at present? Um, no, and, it, and this is the first time that, um, as far as I'm aware, that bats have been mentioned. 
right can we the, the, the um... but, 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 but again as as um as with the issue of, of the stag beetle you know you could attach conditions requiring further survey work to find out you know whether there's any evidence of bats um on the site at the site and if there are um to put in measures to um um, um, um protect them okay but a bat survey should be carried out shouldn't it really yeah is that right? thank you neil the only thing I would remind um, members of before answering, asking for further questions is that we are, the, any conditions we attach are going to the inspectorate. This is not the decision that we are making. Yes, I know. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Let's keep that non-determination in mind, please. Um, okay, any other questions to the two societies? I'm not seeing any uh, special, no, I'm not seeing any at all, in fact. In which case, I'm going to ask first person I've got listed to speak is uh, Nola Barker, who's a resident of the area. And uh, Nola, you have two minutes. I'm just doing my timer. Off you go. Hello, Nola. I... Hello. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to talk about changes to the plot missing information and loss of privacy. Since getting permission, the plot is narrower, shorter, and has lost access rights. No plot of this size has ever been granted planning for a two-story home here. Every other has had a double plot width or, or larger, enough for parking and works. Key information is missing. Is the ground suitable for a basement? Bore holes were aborted and never resumed and neither adjoining property have basements, so we'll need underpinning, but there's no information on piling, what methods, justification, or how impacts will be monitored. Aspects of light and privacy are missing. Our skylight has never been assessed for either. For either. If accepted, they'll be seeing straight into our bathroom, and a five foot two balustrade is not going to help. It's only chest high. Large front windows will be right next to our children's bedroom window and they'll see into that. At the rear, the proposal's overbearing bulk is a full story higher than either neighbor and will protrude 12 foot beyond us. It will block light and cause a sense of enclosure. The rear terrace will protrude 23 feet and sit higher than anyone's garden walls. And being watched over like that, as they'll be standing on that roof, um, will result in loss of privacy to multiple gardens, all narrow and closely aligned. And they'll also three, see into our French windows and into our living area. And finally, why is the construction method virtually unchanged from the one which we petitioned against, 163 of us, and was refused twice by the council because of unacceptable impacts on amenity? These could be alleviated if the applicant re reconsidered using the conveyor system. They're only a foot wide, it can fit down Vanbra Park, and on that side they have a forecourt, four times bigger and twice as wide, and accessed by a two-way main road. Thank you. Thank you, Nula. Lovely timing. Thank you very much. Any questions, please, to Nula from members of the committee? Any questions at all? Not seeing that. Well, uh, Councillor Oliver. I just wanted to ask about in regards to the overlooking. I think you specifically mentioned that one skylight hadn't been looked at. If you could just tell me a little bit more about that. Um, I think uh, in Neil's report, there was a plan showing all the windows that were included in their assessments. And you do see our skylight on that, but it wasn't actually ever included in the report. And because they're going to be a floor higher than us, and their balustrade is still pretty low for a normal sized person, we feel that anyone can stand up against that balustrade and just look straight down into our bathroom. Mm -hmm. And that's our main family bathroom. We all use it, the kids, us. So that, that, that's what it was about really. And that's a key room that you don't really want overlooking in as well. No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other questions to count, uh, to Nola uh, Barker, please, Ms Barker? None that I'm seeing. Okay. In that case, I'm going to ask uh, 
Salimar Dala, to I think you're next on my list. Yes, uh, to speak, please. And again, you have two minutes. Thank you. My name is Salim Dala. I'm a doctor working in the NHS COVID vaccination programme and I'm the carer for my elderly father who lives on Heathway. The current pandemic aside, Heathway is a community with humans living at both vulnerable life stages, the very young and the very elderly. They, as we all are, are vulnerable to illness or injury and therefore reliant on access of emergency services in our road the access of which is a non-negotiable right to life and security. Clearly, no one can predict when access for ambulances, police or fire services may be needed. And I am sure we all agree that these services are time critical. If the development is allowed to proceed, this critical access will be denied. It cannot be allowed to happen at any time, but especially during a pandemic. As we all know too well from the development at the Orchard Cottage site, even with agreed timetables, schedules get ignored and changed without notice. What has been key is that they have had space to come off the road. This is at the Orchard Cottage site. The proposed site, however, is too narrow to allow for this. Heathway has no direct line of sight, so vehicles coming from either end have no way of anticipating that their route will be blocked and so we'll be forced to reverse, losing more time. If this development is granted, I would like the name of someone who is accountable and liable for any injury, illness or worse, should it be sustained as a consequence. This development application as it stands will be detrimental to the mental and physical health of many residents, not just my father. I'm trying to maintain as much independence for him as possible in a secure environment. We need to ensure that there is minimal hindrance in him walking on the road, an area which he has lived for almost 40 years. This familiarity and access is a lifeline for us. It is critical to both our emotional and physical well-being. Please take this to heart. Please do not this allow, allow this to go to head. And thank you very much. Thank you very much. Before we move on to the next speaker, um, your comments on who would be responsible or legal responsibilities, I think in this case, and I would ask our lawyer to uh, double check that on for me, but I think it would rest with the planning inspectorate, whichever decision they make one way or another, uh, not on this planning board, sorry, planning committee. Uh, right, Mr. Uh, we've got Mr. Zulfikar Dala next. Oh, sorry, that's my father. He won't be speaking. I was speaking on his behalf. Oh, well, th oh, well thank you very much for that. But um, in, in his, um, his opposition is noted in the, both the minutes and in the record of this meeting. Thank you very much. Thank you. And next speaker then is um, Victoria Duru, please. Victoria, over to you, please. Off, off mute, please. Thank you. I live a couple of doors down and I would like to raise two areas of concern. Um, firstly, environmental impact. Now, I know this has already been mentioned, so I'm going to be brief here, um, but the plans show that five trees are to be felled, um, but it's actually six if you include an unaccountable magnolia. Um, and I live here and I can say that we do have stag beetles and bats that do use these trees. Um, the proposals leave insufficient room to replace the trees and the established ecosystems used by the bats, beetles, squirrels, um, birds will be lost. This goes against what's promised in the Greener Greenwich strategy. Um, but also the large trees, they provide an important screen between Heathway and Banbrook Park residents, given multiple properties privacy. This will be lost if they are removed. Uh, my second area of concern is safety. I have a baby and a young toddler. The width of the lane by the site is 2.7 metres. A lorry is 2.5. There is no way someone can walk down Heathway and pass through a proposed building site with a pram or baby in arms. To suggest that lorries and vans would deliver and go is simply unrealistic. With the build of Orchard Cottage, there was a situation where a lorry became stuck outside my house. My baby was just six weeks old and we were stuck outside in the rain for a length of time. To propose a blocking of our lane repeatedly as part of the construction is unthinkable and so dangerous. I'm not able to park my car at the property, so I'd have to squeeze past trucks, vans, lorries just to access my car. Would you be happy for your children or grandchildren to walk through a building site just to leave the house? The health and safety of the Heathway residents must be paramount. 
there's no way you can assure our safety if you grant this plan permission. And I invite you all to come along and see for yourself. Thank you. Thank you very much, Victoria. Uh, any questions to Victoria? Not seeing any. In that case, we'll move on to uh, Fran Francis Eldridge, please. If you could unmute your microphone and um, speak up, and I'll start once you start speaking. I don't. I don't start until someone actually says something. Do we have Francis with us? Okay, yeah, we do have um, Francis Eldridge with us. I believe that um, Miss Eldridge is trying to unmute herself. Okay. Hello. Can oh, yes, we can hear you, Francis. That is Francis, yes? No, that was Claire's child, I think, but... <laughs> sorry, no, sorry, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Who have we got? This is always a slightly bizarre situation with us not being in the town hall. We have children, grandchildren, cats, particularly, um, I, both, I was, both uh, one, one uh, of the other councillors and ours. Can so, anyone yes. ask me, Francis, for her? I think the person that is running the meeting might be able to do that. I'm, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, unfortunately, Hold on a second. Council, Hold on a second. Council one Council Lullabar, voice at a time, um, please. One voice at a time, please. Sorry, well, it's not possible for me to unmute people. Um, it has to be the lady concerned. Um, Frankie, may I suggest you're looking for a micro an old fashioned microphone with a red line. It'll either be at the bottom of the screen in the or left hand the corner or possibly at the top. At the top right, if you're using an Apple. Or an Apple um, it, derivative. It, it, it looks like a proper 1920s old kind of like radio microphone. Just while we're waiting for Frankie to find that, I'd just like to point out that there were no uh, microphones until 1924. So uh, mm -hmm. that shows I spent a lot of time by myself when a small child, wouldn't it? Yes. OK, um, look, what uh, we'll do. Chair, may I see very quickly? Um, the, the residents have sent over transcript of what they wish to say um, okay and if Francis is unable to access it given that I'm not here in a capacity as a clerk I'm here purely independently to help with the IT if it's of assistance I can read her statement out okay would members be uh, happy for uh, Jean to read that statement out for Francis Agreed. That, seem to, that seems to make sense uh, Francis, yeah. check, check with Francis. Are you, is she happy for me? Francis, are you happy for, if you could indicate by raising a hand or something, that you're happy for the clerk, sorry, the clerk's assistant this evening to uh, yeah. read the statement. Right, fine, uh, fire, okay. fire away, Jim. Um, I, I will stay as a disembodied voice, if that's all right. Um, okay. Right, this is a statement from Francis Eldridge. It is read within, sorry, it's read without prejudice. There are photos to support my comments. The construction method statement states our silver birch is just west of the rear of the site. It is not. It is on the forecourt of our garage at Fronting Heathway and will be damaged. It has a tree preservation on, or preservation on it. Excavations for the basement foundations and heavy plants will damage the root protection zone despite scaffolding framework, etc., as in the method in statement. The wall between the development plot and our property belongs entirely to us and a barrister has verified our legal ownership. We do not give permission for it to be used in any way or for it to be demolished. On the plans, it shows a gap in this wall opposite their proposed bike shed. There is no gap. I had a chance meeting in Heathway with the builder where I pointed out that the wall was a boundary wall and not a shared party and we would not give permission for it to be demolished and a fence constructed in its place according to the plans. He replied it would probably fall down anyway and that you and nobody else, meaning the council, can stop us. This conversation was witnessed. Ooh, hang on, it's got to go down a bit. I, advised by a, I was advised by a member of the council not to confront the builder but to report if any building works were begun without authorization. MASCH started digging trenches for pipe work before planning had been granted. 
This was immediately stopped by building control. The plans show a basement. There is a Blackheath water table. Three properties recently built in the Heathway are subject to flooding. Where the garage for 77 Vanva Park was built, we wanted a vehicle inspection pit to be installed. The builder said this was not a good idea due to local flooding. That is the end of the written statement. Thank you very much. Uh... Thank you very much, Jean. And as you hear from my phone, perfectly on time. Um, any questions, not to Jean, but any any comments at all from members before we move on to that statement? No, no I don't see any. I just whizzed down the board. No. Um, OK, next uh, person to speak is Linda Jane Hodgson, uh, who's speaking against uh, the proposal, please. Uh, Linda Jane, if you could uh, unmute and uh, fire away. Thank you. Do we have yeah, them in the they, they are in the meeting. I have requested that they unmute. unmute. Thank you very much, Jean. Unmute. Um, I think I've unmuted. Can you hear me? Yes, we yes. can hear you. We can't can see you, see but me? we can hear you. Well, um, we can hear you. I can see myself, so I'm not sure if you can see me. That's fine. Okay. Just fire away. I'll set your time timer for two minutes and off you go. <laughs> I thought I would have four because I am chair of the uh, East Bay Residents Association, but I'll go ahead anyway. So which, um, which, sorry, which uh, I'm residents association? I'm elected chair of the Heathway Residents and Neighbourhood Watch Association. So um, I, I don't I have that as a registered society and you're down as a local resident okay. to speak. That's fine. I am a local resident. So I'll just speak for however long you let well, me. Well, I can always you. be a little bit more generous with your... Okay, uh, thank human. you. So far away. <laughs> Okay, good evening, Chair and Councillors, and thank you for letting me speak at this meeting. I live at Two Heathway, I'm a local resident, and I'm also elected Chair of the Heathway Residents and Neighbourhood Watch Association, an association that exists to defend the rights of residents. There are about 100 or so residents in Heathway. I also attended a, a training session with the council where they told me that the material considerations that should be taken into account in planning applications. So I speak to those and against this application. Firstly, it's been mentioned that there was a previous application on this site, which uh, got approval and that therefore this one in on grounds of consistency perhaps should get approval too. We would argue how, however that it is essentially different because the dimensions are different. The previous application has had included the dimensions of the walls at the side of the property. These do not belong to the site. They belong to the neighbours who are not willing to have them demolished and verges that that the neighbours are not willing to have used. So you cannot just artificially increase the width of a site by putting in neighbours' um, dimensions. And also the point that has been made, but I think it's worth stressing again, that this new um, application does not include the facility of the corridor of access from the 76 Fambra Park. This would be an enormous help to the building on the site because materials could come down that corridor from Vanbra Park where there is parking space for these large lorries. You've seen pictures of them on the orchard site development and to get down Heathway it's a real real struggle we know because we've lived through it. Um, so we would argue therefore on those grounds that it shouldn't simply be allowed on grounds of consistency. We would also uh, note that if you're only going to be able to use Heathway for access to the site and the lorries cannot turn onto the site because we've just had it demonstrated they're not going to do that, they're going to build from Heathway, then those lorries are going to block Heathway. They're going to block Heathway for all 100 or so residents to get access to their properties, to get ambulances, to get fire engines, to get refuse collection, to get anything they absolutely need. And also, they're supposed to be priority for pedestrians as the lady with the children said, how are you going to get down the road with a pram or how is an elderly person uh, in a wheelchair going to get down the road? We have sheltered housing, by the way, in Heathway for the elderly. So 
heat away is going to be blocked, not just for residents. We don't just care about residents. We also care about users of Heathway. If you haven't walked down Heathway, I would invite you to do so. It is a beautiful environment, but it is very narrow, three meters in places, 2.7 in others. And you have a right of way down it. Now it is not legal for anyone to block a right of way, whether it's on a private or a public highway. So if those lorries are going to block Heath Way, they're blocking a right of way, and we believe that is illegal. Now they Linda, might. Could I ask you to conclude now because you've had a, yes. well over so your we two would, minutes now. Okay, thank you. We respectfully submit, therefore, that on these grounds you would refuse this application accordingly. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much for yours as well. And um, any questions? I'm not seeing any. Um, well, we are listening carefully. Um, <laughs> the next speaker, please, is Mark Morris, who's a local resident and he's speaking against. And uh, I'll give you, again, your uh, two minutes plus and uh, off you go. Thank you. I live nearby the site in Heathway. I'm head of teaching at the Architectural Association. I oppose the application around three key issues. Firstly, design. A slender site dotted with trees facing a private road might have seen a sensitive and sustainable design solution, one that met expectations outlined in the Mayor's London Housing Design Guide and the London Plan Policy. It might have used more varied massing and considered proportions to enhance the streetscape. It might have built around a few trees, but this design makes no attempt at any of this. Instead, the proposal is merely the largest possible volume wedged into the smallest possible buildable parcel. Point two, overdevelopment. The only houses of this height are all located at the other end of Heathway, none in vicinity to the proposal. Thus, it presents more as a tower to the street. Its fenestration and balcony placement directly overlook neighbors, which none of the existing three-story houses do. The proposed design is not just overbearing, it is overwhelming. Point three, construction best practices. The construction method statement does not clearly communicate the facts on the ground regarding difficulties accessing the site, the turning radius and loading restrictions, the likely engineering required of digging out below grade living space given the shallow water table and the lateral loads of the existing structures to either side. A sensitive design would have factored in its own responsible construction. This is not a complicated thing to accomplish. Architects and developers all over London attended these, these, these things every day. A better design will render a better and viable approach to construction methods. For these reasons, I ask the council to deny the application. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Mr. Morris. Uh, any questions at all? I know the lack of questions to, uh, to those speaking this evening doesn't mean that we're not listening. And on back on previous experience, certainly doesn't mean that uh, my colleagues are not listening. They're listening very carefully as well. Um, Right, next person speaking against is Patrick Rogers, please. Again, another local resident. Patrick, once you unmute, I'll set your timer. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can indeed. Thank Good. you. I'm sorry, my video is not, uh, doesn't seem to be working. I don't know why. Don't worry about that. Okay, well, thank you, Chair. Um, my wife and I live at the little house, bang opposite the site. You've seen where that is. Uh, we've been here for about 80 years, not quite. Uh, and we fully concur with the other objections, but I'd like to add two more. Our borough has a carbon zero strategy or zero carbon strategy, which is super. But there's little to show how the applicant proposes to ad adhere to it. Yes, we need more houses, but we now, but we now have good technology for building zero carbon. This proposal is far from zero carbon. Why? Zero carbon is central to our core development strategy. Will the council apply conditions to counter this deficiency? My second objection is the applicant's misleading measurements and critical detail. For example, parking per uh, the applicant sketches is virtually impossible. The road and the plot are too narrow to turn in. The driver can't even open the car door. More significant though, lorries will necessarily block access to our front door and car. I refer, refer you to the photographs you've already seen. 
Uh, standard stopping times, which we talked a lot about this evening, only apply if you can use skips and have space to offload materials in one go. Neither of these things can happen. The circumstances are very different from a Tesco drop-off or any previous development in the lane. Even the cottage, Orchard Cottage site, uh, which has off-lane space, uh, gave us long blockages sometimes. Emergency services apart, it is inconceivable and dangerous that we aged residents be continually blocked by gravel lorries, cement trucks and other works and are unable to reach our front door or car. I ask you to reject this application. And anyway, who's responsible if there's an accident? You've partly answered that, I know. Thank you. Thank you very much for your comments. Uh, again, my, my usual uh, repertoire of comments. Uh, any comments to the last speaker? I don't see any. And then we're on to, in that case, uh, Joanna Webb, who I believe is the, again, the local resident speaking against, and is our final speaker against the, uh, the application. Do fire away. Thank you. Um, I'd like to talk about the inevitable blocking of the legal right of way through Heathway for the construction. The applicant suggests, and I quote, all plant facilities and waste will be retained within the bounds of the site. I say that that's gonna be very difficult without excessive times blocking the lane for the following reason. Number one, the entrance to the plot from the lane is narrower than the length of any plant vehicle, so they cannot pull in. To give context, it's the width of a single garage. Two, even small vehicles will struggle to access the plot because it's situated on the narrowest part of the lane and it's really difficult to maneuver there. Three, the area between the lane and the basement digging is about four meters square and that is not enough space for the plant skips, materials, everything. And number four, the toilet facilities are proposed to be located to the rear of the plot, but the servicing truck won't be able to access them there. So clearly they are going to be relocated into the road. I live at number 6A where it's really narrow and the lane bends very tightly and due to the oblique angle of my driveway I can only access it by passing the proposed building site. So any blockage will restrict vehicular access to my house and it won't only be vehicles that are affected. The lane is so narrow on the stretch between house numbers 1A and 11 that it's not possible to pass trucks even as a pedestrian. Heathway has to have a small sized council dust cart. And when they're moving between those two um, house numbers, um, it's necessary to walk behind them on that side <coughs> of the lane. You cannot pass them. So the very limited frontage to this site will cause major disruption, inconvenience and safety issues to residents and the other users. My conclusion therefore is that the proposal is unworkable and the impacts unacceptable. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much, uh, Joanna, for those comments. Again, um, I can't see any comments wanting to be made of the last speaker. In which case, I'm now going to move uh, the uh, process on to the agent for the applicant, which is Mr. Jim Rooney. Um, I'm assuming uh, Claire, Mr. Rooney's with us, yes? He is, Chair. Okay. Uh, you've got up to 10 minutes, Mr. Rooney, so off you go. Uh, good evening, all. Thank you very much, um, Chair and Councillors. Um, Really, I don't have a lot to say. Certainly won't be taking up 10 minutes of your time. Thank you all for your comments. Um, I will just address a couple. Um, firstly, starting with the issue of the delivery times outlined in the construction management plan. Um, I am an architect and not therefore qualified. I do not have an expertise to comment on the uh, proposed delivery times or indeed the duration of those deliveries. All that I can say is that from experience working on sites, the deliveries durations of 15 minutes to 20 minutes are common and not out of the ordinary. Uh, secondly, and perhaps finally, I just want to touch on the tree protection 
uh, to the front silver birch tree on the adjacent site. The uh, tree um, survey and uh, method statement has been submitted and I note that this has been accepted by the planners uh, tree consultant. Um, that will be all from me. Thank you very much, unless anybody else has some questions. Right. Thank you, Mr. Rooney. Um, any comments, please, for the applicant's agent? Do I see any? I don't see uh, any coming up. Let's go, I'll go top oh. to bottom because I sometimes miss out on people. Yes, we've got uh, questions uh, from Councillor Brighty and Councillor Greenwell. Uh, I saw Councillor Greenwell first, so um, off you go, Councillor Greenwell. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Chair. Can I just ask you, this, um, the, the um, agent, sorry, I can't quite remember your name. Sorry about that. <laughs> Apologies. But you, there's an awful lot of argument uh, and discussion about the boundary walls um, between number 77, who owns the wall, uh, and some of the residents saying that they are strictly will not allow um, anybody to interfere with those walls. Um, can you comment further on that, please? Surely, um, just to say that the previous scheme as uh, correctly identified included the use of the boundary wall as a party wall. The current application does not. Councillor Greenwell, does that answer your question for you? Um, uh, well, I, I just, could could we have more? I could have more sort of um, information about it. That just, yeah, it's just that the residents are very very concerned, and um, there isn't a very much space either side of this property anyway. Um, you know, sort of, are we one hundred percent certain that the the boundary walls are not going to be affected? I mean, I, I, I really couldn't comment any further than I already have, I'm afraid. Sorry. Okay, thank you. Um, can I just, sorry, can I just ask a further one again? It's it's going back to this issue about the width of the space for the parked car. Um, the um, It has been said that the width is not wide, wide enough. Uh, Apparently, we were told that it is the required width, but then we've got residents saying that if you parked on that space, you would not be able to open the car door because of the lack of width. Have you got anything more to add on that? I have no further comment on that. The, the occupational therapist who, who made that initial um, finding mm. about the width. Councillor Greenwell, the, uh, the agent for the... the uh, applicant the city has no further comments right okay thank you chair councillor brighton oh thank you chair um i suspect that uh, mr rooney won't be able to answer this either because um, he's already said he's not competent to talk about the uh, vehicle movements but i was hoping to ask uh, given the comments um made by any number of the uh, speakers this evening about um the problems of uh, large vehicles being parked at the building site or outside the building site rather, um, and, and people not being able to get by, not only in car, by car, but also not even being able to walk past. And particularly we heard from the lady who was trying to get through with a push chair and couldn't, and probably wouldn't want to anyway against, uh, uh, you know, by the side of some huge um, mucky kind of building site lorry. Um, so I was wondering, I was going to ask whether how long it would take um, them to move the vehicle um, in the case of an emergency or if somebody wanted to get past, if they're in the midst of loading or unloading heavy material um, and where they'd actually go to. Thank you for that. Yeah, I mean, logic would dictate that in the case of an emergency, the vehicle would be moved immediately. Okay. Does that answer your question? Councilor well, it, 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 it does, but I think it's slightly optimistic given, you know, you could be in the midst of doing some complicated heavy lifting. Mm -hmm. Anyway, thank you. Or not so much heavy lifting, you could be in the middle of doing something like uh, a wet cement drop, which is much harder to stop. Uh, Councillor Lolliver. 
Thank you. Um, I just had two questions. Um, one was, um, I wanted to understand from the applicant um, why um, you consider, uh, would you basically consider using Bamber Park for the construction? And if not, why not? I was just keen to understand why that was not an option. Repeat that question, please. Um, so would you consider using Bamber Park for the construction? Um, as has been outlined in the CMS, actually, in terms of health and safety and accessibility grounds, it's just not feasible, I'm afraid. And, and, and further to the point about this um, contentious um, issue of the side passage down um, the side of 76 Bamber Park, that was really only included in the previous application as a means to... Um, bring a bike through from Bamber Park so that this could be stored at the end of the garden without having going having to go through the property on Heathway. There was no intention for this ever to be used for construction purposes. Thank you. Um, so basically just to clarify, it's it's you're saying it's it's just not possible to to use it from a width point of view. That is correct, yeah. Um, and then also there's lots of concerns that have been raised tonight by residents. So I'm keen to understand just like um, how, as you know, the agent and the applicant have worked to kind of resolve these informally with residents. Um, so would you care to expand on what you mean by that, please? Has there been any dialogue? I was just kind of keen to understand, some, you know, if, if there has been any efforts to resolve this informally. Resolve what exactly? The concerns raised by residents. So the, the the concerns planning planning application, just yeah. out of interest. So if you, if you will let me respond. Uh, the concerns that have been raised by the residents have been responded to in full in the application documents. Thank you. So not, there's no uh, dialogue? No. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Well, Thank you, Aaron. Um, yeah. Councillor Brighty and Councillor Greenwell, uh, got their hands up still. Do you want to ask supplementary questions? Um, no, sorry, I didn't realise. Sorry, that was a mistake. OK, yeah. Councillor Brighty, you do have a question, I think. Mm. Or is that a legacy? Uh, it was a legacy. A legacy hand. Hand. I do have a question, but not particularly for the applicant. OK, yeah. fine. For In our determination meeting, possibly. Or discussion point. Okay, any other comments, please, to the applicant's agent, uh, Mr. Jim Rooney, please? No, I don't see any. <coughs> In which case, I am now going to um, move the meeting to the stage where uh, members of the committee uh, get to speak. And could I just remind participants, much as we've enjoyed your uh, and welcome open participation in the meeting. This part of the meeting is for the members of the committee to discuss the application or uh, in, in, in front of us. And can I just remind colleagues before we do start that, that we are not making a decision tonight. Our dis the uh, outcome of this meeting will go to the inspectorate who is considering the appeal. That shouldn't in any way, of course, affect your, your uh, vote or your comments, please. Uh, first comment, please, from Councillor Adams, then followed by Councillor Lloyd, please. Uh, thank you, Chair. I just wanted to emphasise the simple fact is, uh, in this particular case, we do not have the right to determine this application. No. Uh, we have the right to express our view uh, if we had the right to um, determine the application. Yes. The concerns in relation to foundations and uh, boundary walls, they are party wall matters and they're covered by the Party Wall Act. Uh, and if there are issues arising over construction, they should be embodied in a party wall award or party wall awards agreed between the various parties. The real issue I wanted to ask the officers was, um, perhaps you could just remind me what their actual recommendation was. Um, but before that, I mean, the issues of um, um, environmental problems in relation to parking, I mean, are they... Are there effective valid objections for uh, a uh, proposed refusal if we had the right to refuse? Because there do seem to be issues about uh, access. I mean, there are statutory controls or uh, legislation in relation to uh, obstruction, 
um, but these are not necessarily planning uh, considerations. They are through the normal course of, uh, of, of, of law. But I just wanted the officer just comment on what the original recommendation was and uh, what grounds we would have for objection uh, in relation to parking issues and um, general disturbance. Thank you. Um, so officers are all are, are advising that um, would, would would advise that um, if this hadn't been at appeal, we would be uh, recommending that uh, members grant um, consent. Um, in terms of, in terms of materiality, I mean obviously in land use term, the the issues to do with construction um, is, is not material, but obviously we do have policies in the core strategy which seek to protect um, residents from unreasonable um, adverse impact in terms of noise, disturbance, um, et cetera. What has to be considered is whether it's considered that the um, level of, of disturbance that may or, or, or may not occur with this, with this development during its short construction period is sufficient to warrant refusal. Thank you. Does that answer your question, Councillor Adams? All right. Councillor Lloyd, please. Followed by Councillor Brighty. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, so I've sat on this uh, planning panel for six of the seven years that I've been a councillor. And I actually, I don't think I can remember um, <laughs> less helpful answers to questions um, as, as to what yeah. was just put to the... Uh, to the to, 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 to the applicant's agent, which doesn't really uh, help us. Um, however, Norman has uh, sorry, Councillor Adams, my colleague uh, has has uh, taken the words right out of my mouth. We're not here to determine an application. We are here uh, to uh, to suggest what our uh, deliberations and recommend uh, and determination would have been had it not been going to the planning inspector and from what I've heard and I don't I don't have faith in the timings uh, to drop off uh, buildings equipment on such a narrow lane but I don't feel that that on 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 the on planning on material planning grounds I don't feel that that's enough to to put a recommendation that we wouldn't ordinarily pass this. Uh, as, as Norman said, there are party wall agreements which are dealt with in different area of law and um, that, uh, that in a situation where we would have granted, um, granted approval, the, 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 the rules and agreements surrounding the drop off and delivery and uh, construction uh, construction agreements would have been dealt with under separate agreements. Again, not material planning considerations. Uh, so, given the the, the colourful planning history of this application, uh, I suspect if um, we uh, said that we wouldn't, <laughs> sorry, I'm tripping over myself with the language, but if we put a recommendation that we ordinarily wouldn't have decided to approve it the um the applicant would appeal anyway and i suspect given the planning history would probably win um and and while i do sympathize with the residents um i'm sure that uh that if we were minded to grant a recommendation that we would have granted at permission that their ward councillors will be very very happy to um to raise concerns that maybe the the applicant has breached um, and, and, and has breached agreements, and then raise it with planning enforcement, and they'll have to deal with it then. But I just think, on the grounds of what we've heard and the checkered planning history, and looking at it purely through the eyes of planning law, we can't do anything but say that we would have granted permission. I'm sorry that's been incredibly convoluted, Chair, but I was just trying that's to explain fine. my explain my thought process. But I, I want residents to know that I am 100% sympathetic with the situation that you are in. But we have got to make a decision based in in the realm of planning law. Yeah, um, Norman, did you want to come back on any of those, or is your hand a legacy hand? 
fine. Uh, Councillor Brighty, did you want to make another comment? Yes, thank you, Chair. Well, I haven't made one yet, but... Um, I'm sorry, I'm terribly sorry. No, We've no, made so many were, this evening listening to your dulcet tones. They were, they were, I, they were, I drifted they were, off there. They were, they were questions. Well, look, this application has been around for, in one form or the other for quite some time. I remember, I think I was on the planning, uh, planning board, the Greenwich Area Planning Committee when it came up in 2016, 17, whenever it was. Not that long ago, I suppose. But um, And uh, I'm not sure that I supported it then. Um, but it has been around a long time and um, so long, in fact, that um, the applicants have decided to appeal on grounds of non-determination. But there we are. I thought what I'd say about this is, I mean, I, I well, in fact, a number of um, uh, uh, speakers this evening have suggested that we should go on a site visit. And I don't know whether that's um, feasible in the no. sense that we're not actually making the decision, but no, making a recommendation whether we've got time. But I'm just mentioning that because I don't think it ought to be entirely overlooked. Um, but I, I, in fact, went, I mean, I know it, I know the site and Heathway very well, uh, but I did actually walk down there earlier today and, um, and it, I was struck really about how narrow that site is and also how narrow Heathway is, particularly at that, at that point of Heathway. And, um, and I, I mean, my thought really when I looked at the site was that not every back garden site is suitable for development and certainly not every back garden site is suitable for development of this kind. Um, it's extremely narrow and um, I'm inclined to feel that I would um, not be recommending to the inspector that we that he gives permission to this because I think that the house itself the building is inappropriate in its scale mass and bulk for that site. And then we come on to, and also there is the issue of the loss of trees, which has not been, I think, properly addressed. And that's a, a matter of concern. And then we come on to the construction method statement, which I think is an important issue, and particularly here. Uh, and I know that residency in Heathway, and thank you to Councillor Lloyd for uh, giving a plug to uh, Councillor Lolliver and myself in terms of um, uh, fielding any issues that come up if this does go through. Um, and we did hear, in fact, quite a lot from residents um, um, who had who had a lot of problems with the building that's been going on uh, the uh, the orchard, um, two houses which are nearing completion, um, uh, from from deliveries and the delivery vehicles, and um, and so we know that uh, it's going to be a problem, uh, whatever the applicant may or may not say, and I don't have any faith at all in the. Um, in the schedule we've seen. I don't think that the times uh, for unloading and unloading and cement delivery and all the rest of it are in any way realistic. And even if they were, it's unlikely that they would be adhered to because things happen all the time. And what is gonna be happening is that um, they're gonna be loading and unloading heavy materials, not on site, but from the road. And so the road will be blocked for however long it takes them to, to do that. And people will not be able to get past. If there are if there is an emergency vehicle required, it's going to be a problem uh, there. Uh, and there'll be a lot of noise, a lot of disturbance, and a lot of mess, I would imagine. And this, this lorry will be practically, you know, in the front room of the little house and, 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 and indeed on one or two of the others. Uh, of these lorries will be in the in the front rooms of Little House and some of the other 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 places there, and I just don't think that um, this is um, acceptable um, for us to uh, to agree to that. And I don't know what they do about it, but they need to find some other another way of dealing with it. So I um, if we I will not be voting in favour of this this evening, and um, and, I, and I and I hope that we can recommend to the inspector. I rather wish we were making a decision tonight, but we're not. Um, and we should be recommending to the inspector that he doesn't, uh, that we wouldn't give permission for this. I think it's um, I think on all counts, it's a bad development. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Brighty. Um, I've got various hands up on the board, some of which I think Norman is definitely a legacy, he indicated it was. Uh, Councillor Greenwell, have you got further comment? And then finally, well, uh, I'll yeah, go to um, Councillor Lolivar after you, Councillor Greenwell. And then I will go for, we do have to take a vote, but I'll explain what yeah. the reason there is and how we're going to do it afterwards. Yeah, well... Um, like you say, I don't want to repeat everything that other people have said, but it's just to say I agree 
100 percent an awful lot of what jeff um county brighty has just comments is just made i was going to make i was also going to ask if it was possible probably knowing the answer whether or not we could have a site visit because i have got no, no. very very genuine problems about this particular site i'm worried about the width of the actual drive um and, and the agent didn't I mean, his answer just didn't fill me with any confidence at all. Pat, could um, I just so interrupt you? Pat, could I just interrupt you there? I believe, and I'll, I can always get our lawyer to check that, but we have no right to a site visit because I think the site visit would be undertaken by the yeah. appeal panel, not by us. Um, yeah. But I, I'm, I'm happy to be corrected on that basis by more experienced members of this committee, okay. but I believe that's, that's not the case. But yeah. if you... Yeah. Could, Carry on, Pat. I shouldn't interrupt you. No, no it's all right. I, I just wanted to say that I was very disappointed with the agent's comments. Um, he filled me with no confidence whatsoever. And it's also apparently on, on a very particular, like a bend in the one of the worst particular points on that road. Um, you know, where, where this house is going to be and how are they going to cope with getting the car in and out of the driveway if we're also on a bend. But... Um, uh, I and I also know that when you have developments, no matter how they say that they will adhere to certain rules and times, it just doesn't happen. I have concern for the safety of the residents, for car owners, for the fact that we've got sheltered accommodation. It's a big worry. And I would like a site visit, but obviously we can't have one. Can't do one. So I think I'm going to have to vote against it as well. Sorry. Right. Thank you. Um, we'll talk about the voting in a moment. Um, anyone else wanting to speak? I see Mariam. I think it's uh, I think you'll be the last speaker. Um, yeah, just to um, I think add to my fellow councillors comments for me that. Yeah, concerns also with the, 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 the kind of proposed development itself, as you, you know, there are there is it is a very small site itself and a lot is. Um, a lot of concerns will be raised on that kind of density and the overlooking. And then that's not even to take into account the felling of the trees. Again, that was raised again by other councillors. That is a real concern. Um, and hopefully when we kind of get, again, I know that we're not voting on it, but if we can uh, put, you know, those conditions in, in regards to the surveys as well for the, I think, bat and uh, stag beetle surveys, I think that um, that, that would be worth considering. Um, yeah, concerns that the, the trees that will be lost, and it is great to hear so many people quoting back our carbon, you know, zero carbon plan to us. But again, it, we should be putting it into practice. Um, and I genuinely do not believe that cutting down a tree and replacing it is as good as retaining them. But that's, I understand that we don't have much power in planning over that. Um, and then also then to the construction itself. And I think that is a big part of kind of what has been covered tonight. These you know, we have not only recognised these issues by saying originally and in multiple applications that we needed a construction method statement that was sufficient um, and we've struggled to get one. And there's still concerns about how uh, valid, you know, how well that would work and real concerns that have been raised by the resident. And I think also for me, the fact that the applicant has uh, no desire to kind of engage in dialogue and is pretty curt on this call with no interest to, to engage with us on that, I find frustrating because it makes me think these are things that we're going to have to all work out. If it is approved and construction goes ahead, these are things we'll have to negotiate as a community. And these are things that we're going to have to work together to resolve. So um, that was somewhat frustrating, but that's just a, a side point. Um, but yeah, I, I have some concerns. Thank you very much, uh, Mariam. Right. Um, just want to ask um, Neil, the officer who did the presentation. Neil, I, I think I'm correct in saying that there is no uh, ground, there are no legal grounds for us to undertake a site visit. I think that's correct because it's an appeal and the inspectorate makes the appeal, not us, uh, makes the site visit, sorry. Chair, uh, it might be useful if I just um, comment here. Yeah, um, good. I think the issue about making the site visit is what we're asking you tonight is to, had you been able to make a decision on this yep. application, 
what would you have decided? The officer's yep. recommendation before you is to is is to support the application subject to a whole host of conditions, which does include the construction management plan and the full details and a, and a very detailed one. Um, I think what you've got to go back to is to think is to look at the history in terms of there's a 2016 permission um, and it was accepted as a development site then largely largely as I understand from Neil's presentation of a scheme that has not been altered significantly since then and sat within the same core strategy policy context that that application and that decision was taken. So I think if members are minded to make a different decision to the officer's recommendation, members need to point to what's changed significantly since that 2016 permission, including, and I do understand and acknowledge the frustration of trees being felled, but there were trees that were felled in the 2016 permission as well, and that was considered to be acceptable in the round and balancing all the issues in terms of the benefits of um, approving the scheme. So I think mem members have got to, and it was also a conservation area at that time in terms of preserving, enhancing the conservation area. So I think members have to think carefully if they're not minded to support the application. And I think you're obviously going to go to a vote anyway. Um, what those, what's those reasons for refusal would have been, and that would give us the basis to defend an appeal. Um, in terms of the issues that a couple of councillors have, have mentioned about the, um, the lack of responses from the agent, whilst that is unfortunate, it's not a material planning consideration, so you mm. do have to stick to the facts of the case here. And in terms of the car parking and the width of the car parking, whilst he didn't give a particularly helpful answer to you, Neil did write back at the very beginning of this item, um, confirm the widths of the car parking as well. So you can also ask the, the council's case officer um, to obviously comment and give you advice and information relating to the scheme as well to help you come to the judgment as to whether you're going to support or not support the application. Thank you, Vicky. That's a very helpful intervention. Councillor Adams. Chair, um, can I just ask the, the officers, um, the, the, the only thing that may have changed between the 2016 and the current application is obviously the issue about uh, bats and stag beetles. Mm. Now, normally we would do some sort of environmental assessment um, and uh, I know that as far as bats are concerned, um, legislation is quite, uh, quite strong if you disturb bats and their, mm. and their nesting arrangements. But I just wondered whether that might form the basis of um, uh, uh, a viable objection, um, bearing in mind that uh, we've already granted a consent for something similar. Okay. I mean, I think, I think if... Um, we were looking for the council to make a decision on this tonight. Um, I think you could have looked possibly to uh, make it as a reason for refusal, but because we are at um, an appeal situation, I think there's nothing stopping you from saying to the inspector that um, you would like a, a, a condition um, attached to um, address these issues and to actually establish whether, whether there, there are bats on site. I mean, I, I go back to what I said at, uh, during my presentation that, you know, particularly in terms of the stag beetle, while, while we've had a, a photograph of a stag beetle, there's no evidence from that 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 actually means that there is a stag, that there are stag beetles on, on the site. And to refuse the application on potentially that limited information, you know, could put the council in a very, very difficult position um, at appeal. Um, I would just like to go back to something that was raised in terms of, um, which has been raised by a couple of councillors as well, in terms of, of, of carbon neutral, et cetera. And just to say that under the 2016 application, um, and apologies that I didn't cover this in my presentation, it's probably one of the few things that I didn't mention, was that on the original consent, we did actually place conditions requiring the unit to be built to carbon neutral. They were some of the conditions that the previous applicant um, appealed to the planning inspector on saying that we were unreasonable in putting those conditions on. 
and the planning inspectorate agreed with that and removed those conditions. Um, and in making that decision, the inspector made reference to a 2015 written ministerial statement that confirmed that the government does not intend to proceed with zero carbon emission requirements for small scales, small schemes. And on this basis, the council have agreed that the conditions should be removed because obviously this is a this is a, a small scheme. So I, I don't I'm not aware that the council's the, the the government's position on that has changed. But in light of what the the decision that the inspector made previously, I think it'd be very, very difficult for us to um, substantiate that appeal again um, under the current application. Thank you, um, Neil. Um, as my uh, colleague, my ward colleague and colleague on the council, Chris, uh, Councillor Wiley said, um, this is a very, very difficult and complex um, matter. And because we're not doing our usual thing, which is saying yes or no or abstaining. This is subject to an appeal. And our comments tonight are comments on that. And I will take a little while as chair to summarize some of the things. I thought the resident spoke absolutely eloquently. Um, if I might put on record, I thought the agent was appalling. And I'd like that minuted, please. I thought he was abrupt and, and unnecessary. Thank you. Can I have that minuted, please, secretary. Uh, clerk to the meeting, apologies. Um, so we are only voting on the pill grounds. I mean, interesting enough, when uh, our officer Vicky mentioned on what grounds, if we were voting against voting in an active vote tonight, um, I mean, I'm looking at material planning grounds now, and Councillor Adams certainly brought up the issue on nature conservation, which is the bats and the stag beetle one. Um, there are many of the uh, speakers this evening spoke eloquently on many other um, what are material considerations. Um, I would say parking, loss of hi uh, highway safety. Um, noise is always a difficult one with building because there's always noise associated with it. Um, layout and density uh, and also uh, loss of privacy was mentioned very clearly by, I think it was by uh, Nola Baker about the bathroom. Um, but unfortunately, we're not voting on that this evening, what we are. We can still express an opinion as a committee. We don't have to vote in favour of something that we don't approve of. Just as if we were voting not on an, an appeal decision, we can vote how we wish. Uh, and if we do choose to um, turn that down, then there are material grounds, I believe, um, that we can turn them down on. Certainly, the Nature Council, as I've just, uh, I will repeat myself, uh, in the nature conservation um, design, design possibly and appearance, as mentioned by uh, Mr. Morris, uh, but certainly loss of uh, privacy and overlooking, parking and highway safety. I think would, I think there's quite a lot of material grounds actually. If this was another development, and I, I'm, I, I would be very, I'd be um, very surprised at how the appeal turns out. I'd be interested to, very much to see how the inspector goes on this one. But I am going to now ask the clerk of the meeting. We have, you have uh, to ask members to vote in our normal way. And it's how you would have voted. It's a slightly strange situation. How we would have voted if this were a planning application board coming to us as was in 2016 or as is now. And I would ask the clerk of the meeting to um, record the vote please in the normal alphabetical order. And if there are material conditions uh, that we feel it's breaches, then I will list them at the end. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, just apologies in advance as well for any noise behind me, which is um, that of my son. Um, so I'm going to start um, alphabetically um, with Councillor Adams. Can you f confirm that you maintained your IT connection and also whether you would have voted in favour against or whether you would have abstained? Uh, thank you. I have maintained full connectivity uh, and I would have abstained. Thank you. Councillor Brighty, again, um, if you could confirm that you've maintained your IT connection and also confirm how you would have voted or whether you would have abstained. Yeah, thank you. I did maintain a connection throughout and I would have voted against. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Greenwell, 
please confirm if you maintained your IT connection and how you would have voted. Councillor Greenwell, are you with us for the vote? Councillor, come off mute, please. Really important you do so. No, you're still on yes, mute. Sorry, uh, sorry. Um, yes, I did maintain connection and I would have voted against. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, Councillor Lloyd, um, please confirm if you maintained your IT connection and how you would have voted. Thanks, Claire. I maintained my um, uh, connection throughout and I would have reluctantly uh, voted in favour. Thank you. Councillor Oliver, please confirm if you maintained your IT connection and how you would have voted. Um, yeah, I maintained my IT connection and I would have voted against. Thank you. Councillor O'Mara, please confirm if you maintained your IT connection and how you would have voted. I maintained my connection and I would have supported the officer's recommendation. Thank you. Councillor Smith, uh, same questions. Did you maintain your IT connection and how would you have voted? I maintain my connection and I would have supported the officer's recommendation. Thank you. Councillor Brain, um, please confirm that you maintained your connection and how you would have voted. Uh, yes, I maintain connectivity throughout. Very, very difficult one, this one. Um, and um, I would have, I think, having heard all this evening and read all the detail today earlier on, I would have, like Councillor Adams, abstained. Can you tally up the vote for me, please, Claire? Certainly. Um, so um, three members have voted in favour of the application. Three, mem three members have voted against the application and two members have abstained. Fine. Um, in terms of normal procedure, um, of course, I have the casting vote, uh, but we there have a three, three and a two abstentions. And I don't believe I need to make a casting vote this evening because this is an appeal, not a decision. Um, uh, Chair, Councillor Gian, yes? Chair, we, we, um, we do need to know Sorry, whether officer. we're... Um, uh, whether we're defending an appeal for a refusal or whether we're saying to the inspector that we support the scheme. So, so a, a three, a three, four and a three against is, is not giving us any guidance. Obviously the officer's recommendation is perfectly clear from the report that officers are supporting the application, but we need to know what members would have done if they had been able to make the decision. So we can then go forward to appeal, either to not defend an appeal and, and say to the inspector if he would have approved the scheme, or if, if the committee are minded to refuse the scheme, then, then we will be defending um, an appeal against a refusal. What is the uh, case uh, history on this of uh, someone like myself having abstained as the chair who normally has a casting vote? So I think that probably be, is a matter for the committee clerk. Um, I'm not clear about that. Nor am I. Yeah, uh, and I'm afraid it's not a position that I've come across either. Um, so I can try and get some advice um, and yep. maybe speak to um, someone in legal. Yeah, um, we need, there was no legal. We didn't have a legal officer here tonight, which is a great no. shame. A real great shame. It's one where we really, really did need one. Uh, Councillor Adams, do you, do you want to speak again, please? Yeah, I think, make a useful I, I, contribution. I, yeah, I, I think, I think, Chair, we, we've reached uh, um, uh, a bit of an impasse. And I think we now need legal advice. Yeah, we do. Sorry, we need to reconvene subsequent upon that legal advice as to whether any member wishes to change their, um, yes. their, their vote. And I think that's so, all we can do. Yeah, thank yeah. you very much, Norman. Always useful uh, advice. And I certainly would not be happy changing my advice, uh, my vote apology, uh, in a public scenario without legal advice. Um, I have, as you know, in the past, turned down much, much, much larger applications on my casting vote, and I'd be happy to do it again, um, but uh, not without legal advice. And I think Councillor Adams' advice that uh, we have reached an on pass is exactly how I feel now. And uh, we will take legal advice from our legal department and reconvene on this one. But I imagine what we would now do, um, and I'm again happy to get uh, qualification from our legal team, that when we reconvene, it will be for possibly just the vote. Um, I would have thought that would be the case. There's a logic to that. It would just be for the vote. It wouldn't be for a full uh, application 
uh, as it were, in front of us. Can I can I just um, make one, ask for one thing, which is, given the fact that we have granted consent in 2016 for a similar application, I'd like some advice on what exposure we might um, uh, reveal ourselves to uh, in terms of costs if we um, voted against. And I, I think that should be part of the legal advice. Thank you I very mean, much. I, yeah, I can give you some advice on that now. Yeah. If that's helpful. Um, so, so the 2016 previous permission is a material consideration that as a decision maker, you must take into account as to what weight you choose to give that is entirely up to you as a decision maker. Mm. And the judgment to that weight is up to you as a decision maker. But what you have to be cognizant of is looking at what has changed since the 2016 permission from then to now, and what's different in this scheme from then to now that you could, that you could legitimately say and defend at appeal that there is something that's harmful that is arisen out of this scheme. So, so it is a matter of judgment, but the, but the way that you afford that, that previous permission um, is, is entirely up to you to make that judgment balanced against all those factors. Thank you, Vicky. Right. Um, in that case, I am now going to, um, unless anyone else wants to add their uh, contribution to that, to to wind the proceedings up this evening. But uh, before I sure. say thank you, sure. So I'm, I just want to clarify because, I, I, as I understand it, we're not, we are we, well. We all know we're not making a decision tonight. We're no. simply we're simply saying to um, the planning inspector, whoever he or she might be, how we would have voted if um, if we. Um, you know, if we were making the decision, and you know, we've obviously reached a sort of a, an unusual uh, situation, but um, but I'd, I, why would I mean? But essentially, we're really giving him an opinion, aren't we, of, 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 of yes. what we think about it? And the opinion is is you know, it's mixed, it's split. It's split. And uh, so I, I mean, I do, we can't possibly, surely, perhaps Vicky Vic can tell us this. We couldn't be held accountable for that in any way. Uh, I mean, this is already going to appeal. He's going to make the decision and presumably he might or might not be guided by what we say. So so the inspector will make a decision. Normally that's on a refusal or in this case, it would be had you been able to make that decision, would you have refused it? If we, what what the inspector will need to know is what the, what the, the councillors local planning authority are doing to defend this case. Are they defending it in terms of the something that would be unacceptable? So had you been able to make a decision, you would have refused it. Or are we saying at appeal, actually the scheme is acceptable and the merits of the scheme are acceptable and subject to the conditions being attached, we would have, you would have approved the application. Then the inspector has to take that into account. So we can't go to the inspector at and say, and this is with obviously all due respect to the committee and everybody who's taken part today, but we can't go to the planning inspector and say, actually, we've got three councillors who, who, who want to refuse the scheme, three councillors who want to support the scheme, and two who want to abstain, plus an officer's recommendation, which is to grant planning permission, because the inspector just won't know what, what view to take into account that's coming from the local planning authority. Chair, could I come in there? Of course, Councillor Lloyd. Yeah, thanks, Steve. Um, I, it's a chair, sorry. Um, I, I think um, Vicky's just made my point very eloquently, but I think uh, since I'm not a council officer, I can probably be a little bit more, more, uh, a little bit freer with my words. What the officers need from us is a steer on whether or not to defend. Uh, an appeal or not we can't give we can't give them mixed opinions think of no. it as a court of law it's a it is a judicious it is a judicious decision that we either that we will either be defending or otherwise now if the just and, I, and I, i'm not going to call into question the the, the votes of any councillor on this panel I know, I know you all too well and respect you all too much um and you know there has been a decision three in favor three against and two and 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 two abstentions now i think if no one's prepared to reconsider their votes then the absolutely correct thing to do is to get that legal advice then unfortunately chair it does fall to you 
uh, depending on what that, uh, li- well, it, it will likely fall to you depending on what that legal advice is. But a decision needs to be made either way. So our planning officers know whether they are defending or not uh, this in court because a mixed opinion or a, 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 a mixed message will, uh, I, I suspect even if we did decide tonight unanimously to say that in different circumstances we would have opposed this scheme, I suspect we would have lost it at appeal anyway, which I, I gave that in my, in, my, um, in my reasons for voting the way I did. Um, but uh, a mixed message will be treated exactly the same. So uh, it's, it, it's, it, it, it's a bit of a mess we're in. But, um, Look, I, with, with great respect, we, we've, we've reached an impasse. Yeah. Um, I've suggested a way forward. What I'd like is I'd like advice on whether we're exposing ourselves to costs, because all planning uh, appeals have um, a section about the award of costs and about nine times or 20, 19 times out of 20, the inspector does not award costs against us. Uh, but we might be in a slightly difficult situation here. That's the first point. And the other point is I want to know is whether the issues of bats and stag beetles would be a valid ground for objection. Mm. I want the officers to give us a, you know, a, an impartial opinion on, on that. So that if we are covered, if we have made a change from uh, consent, which we granted in 2016, to one which we're not prepared to, to advise consent uh, in 2021. Thank you very much again, both Norman and, and Chris. And certainly, I, I am not, I certainly dream, wouldn't dream of doing it, having made a public vote, change my vote uh, at this stage without getting further legal advice. So all I'm going to say now is that I would ask the officers uh, in particular to contact our legal team. And I'd say it's a great shame you haven't got a lawyer tonight because we've got some good lawyers on our team. Uh, and it would have been helpful to have had them here, um, had one of them here this evening. Um, but I cannot, we can Norman's quite right. This is an on pass. I'm not prepared to change my vote uh, yeah. and then carry the vote. Uh, it would be most improper, most improper for a dem- democratic process. And so I'm not going to do that. I would repeat what Norman's just said. I want to have further advice from our legal team and from officers that they bring it back to us and then we take. We've got material. There are some material grounds. They may be able to shoot us down. Our lawyers may be able to shoot us down or or not shoot us down, support us, whichever way that's going. But I I don't think we can go any further this evening. Uh, But I would like to thank everyone for this very difficult and curiously intellectually um, stimulating meeting. Mm. Always the same for the residents who are uh, engaging in this as well. But I really would like uh, further guidance on this before we make any form of decision. So it will come back to us, I would imagine, and we will then do a straight vote on this. Um, but other than that, I'd like to thank you all for your attending and attending in both senses of the word and your really, really important and interesting contributions this evening. I think it does show local democracy in action. So thank you everyone, everybody. And, um, oh, Maureen, are you, what did you want to say to her? Oh, well, she was waving good night. Right, she wants me to shut up on her thought, but... Um, <laughs> But um, but thank you all, and uh, we'll wait for the opinion, and we will all reconvene on this item. Thank you very much. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night, everyone.